Srila Prabhupada Ki. So, on behalf of his Khan's I would like to welcome each one of you to this 47th month Srimad Bhagavatam Katha. So, it's slightly different than what you're used to in the temples where uh, it's just spoken, but here you can see there will be some pictures, you can also participate in and take some notes. We will also be giving you some notes. I'm just waiting for uh, other Prabhu to come and distribute all that. So, all we want you to do is uh, attentively uh, hear and participate in the Srimad Bhagavatam Katha today. So, what you can do is... So we'll uh, get started by chanting uh, the verses that we all know to get into the mood of uh, devotion. Om Akyana Tingaranda Sekana Jina Shalakya Chakshodan Melita Mena Tasmay Shri Gurabena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pishtam Stapita Mena Bhutale Swayam Dupakala Mayam Tadati Swapatantika Vandeya Shri Guru Shri Yudapatakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvaitam Savatutam Parijana Sagitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shri Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Prasthai Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nidhinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pachatata Sitarine Mukham Karoti Machalam Pantum Nankai Degiram Yatrapata Mahamande Shri Guru Dinataranam Vancha Kalpata Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Veva Chapalitana Bhavanebhya Vaishnavebhya Namo Namaha Namo Mahavada Nyaya Krishna Prema Pratayata Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauratri Se Namaha Namo Brahmane Devaya Bo Brahmane Itaya Chacharati Thaya Krishnaya Bo Indaya Namo Namaha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namo Sude Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrindha Vineshwari Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priyer Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradra Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrindha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai So this is the 47th month of Srimad Bhagavatam Katha that we started in 2015 but this year we almost didn't have any session because of you know traveling and other activities but uh, we are ready to jump start it again and uh, we will have it more consistently next year starting in 2025. So um, this is an immersive study of the past time so which means we'll go deep into the past time not just like you're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam because you will have purpose and description from various other acharyas during this session. So the purpose and foundation is, it's built on Srila Prabhupada's uh, purpose, but also from other acharyas as well. So we have many other uh, uh, acharyas purport also that is here. So we can just move slightly so that it's on the center. So hopefully all of you can see it in the back. Uh, some of it may be slightly fine print, but uh, you'll be able to understand it. Hare Krishna. Please come. We have devotees coming all the way from the West End as well. Thank you for joining. Anywhere, Prabhu. Anywhere you can sit down. So we will also have uh, additional gems from current Vaishnava Acharyas as well. Um, and uh, your roles and responsibilities. Right? So it's, it's not just one way street. So it's two uh, ways to learn. So we want you to fully focus and dedicate your attention for the next two hours. right? So all of you are here for a very specific purpose to understand and learn from the past times of Lord Krishna. So try to absorb it as much as possible. And we want you to actively participate, right? So as you always do, so kindly actively participate in reading some of these uh, verses and also sharing your um, you know, lessons learned from these past times. So that's very, very important. And then we will all benefit together because if you share your experience, we will all learn from that and we will collectively learn from each other. So we will have comprehensive insights to this presentation and uh, you will also 
be able to go deeper into these uh, exploratory activities. And um, I've provided as many cross references as possible to similar events or stories that are interconnected with this particular pastime. And in the very end, we'll have a chronological uh, sequence, a summary of the whole pastime so that it really registers in our mind. And then we will, um, you, you know, it takes about 80 to 100 hours to put this together. So what you're going to see now is an effort uh, that has been put for about, taken about 100 hours. So make use of that in this two hours so you will benefit. And all you need is, you know, the printout that we'll give you that you'll be taking home today. That's all you'll need. You don't need anything else because this has got so much more from every other source that you can think of. Um, so please take notes as well as you feel fit because that's one of the sensory perceptions that we have which you can use to enhance our learning. And um, it's we we'll also bring in real world spiritual lessons that will be discussed as well with each other. And in the end, there'll be a quiz for those of you who've been with us before uh, for 46 other sessions. We'll have a quiz in the end. Don't worry, nothing to get embarrassed. We'll all collectively do that together. And um, you know these gems and jewels from various past from this past times have been mined with utmost dedication, and I can tell you to enhance your learning. It's not like copying and pasting from somewhere. So what you're seeing is something that you would never see uh, seen anywhere. So it will just enhance your learning. And then more than what you need is in each slide. As you can see, even this slide has got a lot of information. More than what you need is here. So if you're a fast reader, go ahead and read it. But you don't even need to read it because we will go through the critical aspects of it as and when uh, it is needed. So again, uh, Hare Krishna to all of you who have taken your time to take part in this, uh, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam interactive katha. And special thanks to Amal Tabut Prabhu because this time it's not only the quiz you will take home, but you will also have the sequential summary of the pastime as well as you will have lessons learned from this, right? So practical lessons to be learned. Uh, Prabhu has uh, painfully taken up this project of printing all these things. So let's put our hands together for Amrita. Because, you know, you will know the value of it after six months, seven months. Kalia pastime, okay. Let, where is it? Which, uh, which book is this, for, for example? Starting with Srimad Bhagavatam, yeah. Which chapter of this from Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So, so on and so forth. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So, Pitambar Prabhu is also here. Let's uh, welcome him with a nice round of applause. Okay, so, um, wonderful to see all of you. So, again, this is uh, the immersive study of this past time. And again, we cannot do it without you. So, collectively, we are learning. It's not like one-way traffic. Collectively, we are learning more from each one of you. So when we pay attention, we retain what we hear and what we um, uh, learn, right? So the power of attention, again, this is uh, same whether we are studying in school, studying in college, studying anything from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, does not matter. Attention is the foundation of everything, right? So unless we pay our attention, we cannot understand anything. Is that a fair statement? So attention, so memory also enhances if you pay attention, right? So whether it's for Srimad Bhagavatam or for anything in, um, you know, science, math, doesn't matter. If you pay attention, the memory and the retention power increases. Now, attention determines skills, right? So why somebody is a great artist, uh, why somebody is a great painter, because they are able to pay their attention and they become great in this. And if we do the same, if we pay our attention in anything, then we will become better in that as well. So somebody can shoot well, somebody cannot shoot well, again, it's the attention and the focus, right? So universal principle, from the basic task to the most comprehensive task, the root cause of not just a failure, the root cause of success and failure is attention or lack of it, right? So again, we want to basically bring in what we need to pay our attention and focus our attention on what we are going to learn, then automatically we'll be able to retain what we learned and we'll be able to use it personally in our day-to-day -day life as well. So instead of sitting there and giving a class, which is normal, but here the extra uh, you know, effort has been put uh, for the benefit of everyone is because we want to use more than one sense organ, right? Not just eyes, not just ears, but we want to use our 
um, hands as well to take notes, right? So eyes, uh, we'll have images uh, from the scriptures as well. You're using your ears. Uh, you will uh, read some of the verses as well. So you'll be using your tongue. And of course, there'll be some prasadam to eat as well after that. The sense of touch is all of you have got uh, notebooks and pens. Hopefully, if you don't have Amrita, we can pass it along to you. Please keep that with you and write it as clearly as possible because this is for you, right? So make sure that you take Hare Krishna Mahathir, you're okay? Yeah. So please take notes so that, uh, you know, it will help you. Don't rush through it so that uh, you understand what you wrote. Uh, maybe there will be some incense that will be uh, uh, available as well to have the devotional mood. But mainly, let's use our mind, which is the leader of the senses, uh, on the contents of what we're going to do. So, this again is very important for those of you, maybe teachers, maybe students, does not matter. Um, so, we need one more uh, chair. Yeah, thank you. No, sit there. Sure. Okay. It's okay. I'll go from the corner. Okay. So, the five R's for knowledge retention does not matter. You're studying in school, colleges, something work in SAP, you know, or Microsoft Office, whatever you're trying to learn. It, it need to be relevant to you. You need to have recall codes. You need to have repetition, review, and reflect. You see, all R's are R for relevance, R for recall codes, R for repetition, R for review, R for reflect as well, right? So, if you're a teacher, you can use all this when you're teaching others, right? So, whatever you're teaching, uh, you can uh, bring the relevance based on these five universally acceptable um, uh, relevance, recall codes, repetition, review, and reflect, right? So that's what we are going to do. Um, if you base your teaching on anything, then your audience will always be able to absorb it, right? It's not always, um, um, let's say, it, it, it's up to you to present it, right? So it's not always the uninteresting audience or inattentive audience, but it will be ineffective message, right? So if you are able to make it into an effective message, then there are no um, inattentive audience, right? So for all that, the audience need to be, or your teaching or what you're showing should be connected with all this. So it's relevant to all of you, that's why all of you are here. Is that a fair statement? Nobody's yes. forced us to be here. And we use recall codes, right? We use some acronyms, we will use uh, some uh, summaries, of course, the summaries and the quiz in the end. We will repeat certain things because repetition causes retention, okay? So we'll use that. And we'll also review in different angles from different perspective. And also we'll reflect, introspect, and internalize the lessons to be learned, okay? Uh, for those of you who've been in this journey from 2015, I'm not gonna go through this, but you can see various past tense from various cantos, fifth canto, fourth canto, many different cantos we have taken, multiple topics. And it's not just understanding superficially, right? As you know, we go deep into each one of those past tense. So there's no way that you will forget this, especially when you have some takeout um, uh, with your takeout of uh, the summaries and the quiz and the lessons to be learned as well, right? So many, many past tense. So uh, Narakasura, Kathwanga, Krishna's marriage, uh, the marriage of Sukanya, Ch Chavanamuni, uh, how Lord Krishna retrieved Devaki's sons, on and on and on. We dive deep into it and we are so uh, pleased and happy that all of you were part of this journey until now. And as I mentioned, uh, from January of next year, we will do it more consistently. And these are interesting subjects, right? These are stories, right? So you cannot be not interested in stories. And today, we are going to dive deep into the Krishna chastising, uh, the serpent Kalia and the history of uh, Kalia. So if you read that, it's it will not be in sequence, and that's what Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to be. There is uh, gems and uh, uh, you know expensive uh, uh, jewels everywhere throughout Srimad Bhagavatam. But we put this in a sequential order, not just from 1016, 1017, which is the crux of the Skalya's pastime, but also from Srimad Bhagavatam 6.6, .6, Srimad Bhagavatam 8.6 as well, during this churning of the ocean of milk together. A couple of references from there. So we'll condense this 112 verses today, and then if you take that into account, so we have covered over overall 25% of whole of Srimad Bhagavatam from 19 uh, from 2005 onwards. But in reality, over 70% of the entire past times have been covered so far. So you know we still have long ways to go, but overall, when you take the past times alone, over 70% have been covered. 
So we'll cover uh, more of that, but uh, again, it's not possible without all of your uh, support and guidance as well. And thank you, Lord, you are covering this and you are putting the third and all the time. So today you really, you know, see the depth of what we are going to cover today again with your participation. So we'll always start off with why Srimad Bhagavatam is important. So this is when I need uh, some of you to take turns to at least read the English translation. I'll quickly go through these verses. These are verses that you would have already memorized, right? Jnane prayasa mudupasya namantreva jivan tisan mukaritam bhavadi yavartam sthane stita shudikatam thanuvan mano vidyat praya so jita jitopya sithe istri lokyam. It's beautiful translation. This is from 1043, Brahma's prayers to Lord Krishna after, you know, all the pastimes are over. He's praying to Lord Krishna, he's offering this uh, verse. Anybody from this uh, row, this part, this half of uh, um, the devotees, can anybody read this English translation? Those who, even while remaining situated in their established social position, throw away the process of speculative knowledge and with their body, words and mind offer all respects of descriptions of your personality and activities, dedicating their lives to those, uh, these uh, narrations which are vibrated by you personally and by your pure devotees. Uh, certainly conquer your um, lordship, although you are otherwise unconquerable by anyone within the three words. Wonderful. So, Jita and Ajita, that's the conquerable and Ajita, unconquerable, right? So, in a nutshell, what it says is, you may be situated in your established social position. Somebody may be a doctor, somebody may be a cook, somebody may be a housewife. That's not matter. Stay where you are. You don't need to go to Himalayas and become a sannyas. No. Yes, stay where you are, remain in your social positions, but don't have this biased opinion this way, that way. Just don't have any speculative knowledge. But with your body, words, and mind, if you're able to hear the past tense of the Lord, like all of you are doing, going to do today, right? Just by hearing these narrations, which are vibrated by you personally, which is Veda Vyas, because he's a 17th incarnation and he's the author of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and by your pure devotees, because this is given to us by A.C. Bhakti Vinta Swami Srila Prabhupada, then certainly you'll be able to conquer the um, unconquerable Lord. So just by hearing, you'll be able to conquer the unconquerable Lord. Okay? So this is from Srimad Bhagavatam itself. So we'll get one more. Uh, Prabhu to read from here, but this is also another verse. Pivatiye Bhagavata Atmana Shatam, Katamritam Shavana Puteshu Sampritam, Punantite Vishya Vidushi Tashayam Prajantita Charanas, Saroru Hantikam. Anybody? Those who drink to oral reception, fully filled with the nectarian message of Lord Krishna, <coughs> the beloved of the devotees, purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment, and thus go back to Godhead, to the lotus feet of Him, the personal devotee. Wonderful. Thank you. So here, all it, very clearly it says, if you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, you will be able to purify the contamination of material life, which we'll all have to go through in this life. But at the end, we go back home, back to Yes, sir. You do see like a contamination dirt. <laughs> Wonderful. So this is a fascinating verse. If you have not memorized this verse, and if you're looking for a verse to memorize, this is the verse for you to memorize. 2 to 37 is the last verse in the second chapter of the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So 2 to 37. Last verse in the second chapter of the second canto. Pivantiye Bhagavata Atman Shatam Kathamritam Shavana Puteshu Samritam Punantite Vishay Vidu Shita Sayam Vrajanti Chacharana Saroru Antikam. So, so, important is Kathamritam and Punati. Punati. Yes, Punati means it's very fine. 
Catholic. Just by hearing, purifies us. Beautiful. Thank you, Prabhu. And one last verse on the glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam before we get into this wonderful pastime, right? So, why are we hearing and reading from Srimad Bhagavatam? Especially in, when we say Hinduism, right? So, we know the history, uh, Hindu is the name coming from the river Sindhu. We know all that. We are called Sanatan Dharma. We understand all that. But colloquially, we are all called as, say, Hindus, right? So, in Hinduism, there's no one book spiritual book, not just one. In Christianity you have Bible, you have Quran, in, but in Hindu, which one do you say is one book, right? So you have uh, uh, four Vedas, then you have uh, 108, but actually it's like thousands of Upanishads, right? 108 key Upanishads, but thousands of Upanishads. Then um, you have, uh, you know, especially when you get into this Yajna and things like that, you have so many more literatures as well. But why we are focusing so much on Srimad Bhagavatam? Because Maybe we'll get Prabhu to read this. Srimad Bhagavatam is filled with a ecstatic love. It is the body of Lord Krishna. All confidential pastimes of Krishna are described in it. And who's saying this? It's, it's mentioned by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to a great person by the name of Devananda Pandit. This is from, I took it from Chaitanya Bhagavat. Usually we hear from Chaitanya Charitamrita, but this is from Chaitanya Bhagavat. So, why are we reading from Srimad Bhagavatam? Because it's non different from Lord Krishna. Okay, so the legend in this pres uh, presentation, black text means it's actually from Srimad Bhagavatam, relevant to this. Purple text means it's from other scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, etc. Red text is commentary by our Acharya, so that we understand it. Yes. So I, was, I was thinking on the earlier words, you know, Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamala. Pibata is coming again. Again, Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamala. So, 1 to 18 or something? But then that is 1, 1, 3. Nigama Tatpa Karo, Taro Kalitam Palam, Sukumuga Amrita Dravasamitam, Pivata Bhagavatam Rasamalaya Muhuro Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. The third verse in the first canto of the first chapter. So, oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, the, you know, it is, it is emanated from the lips of Sukhdev Goswami, even though the nectarian juice was relishable even to the liberated souls, right? So, there is, there is a difference between listening and hearing. Yes. So yeah, you, yeah. So hearing but listening is you know the big difference, right? So again, you're all here, so you're not just going to you know from here to here, right? So we're going to from here and you go inside, right? You're going to internalize what we are reading. So again, we thank all of you for taking your time again. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So and this is the acronyms and the nomenclature, right? SB means Srimad Bhagavatam, BG means Bhagavad Gita. When we say BG nine point one seven, Bhagavad Gita nine point Chapter 9, verse 17, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter, first verse, VCT is Vishnu Chakra Thakur, SP Srimad Prabhupada. So we'll explain that a little bit more. Okay, so fasten your seatbelts, we'll jump into five, five, this wonderful five, pastime. Um, again, this is taken from, again, not just from 10.16 um, and 10.17, but also from Garga Samhita, because that will give you an insight of who Kalia was, right? So all of, if I ask you, you know Kalia pastime, all of you, yeah, Kalia was there, yeah, I remember. Uh, that pastime where Krishna did not kill him, but there's something more, much, much more in this pastime for us to learn. Okay? So we will go into Garga Samhita, Srimad Bhagavatam, not just 1016, 1017, but also we'll pull in some um, key uh, information from Srimad Bhagavatam 6.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8 and much more. But this is just a um, little bit of idea for you. Okay? Now, this is something that I took it from an outside source, but it's fascinating. And I used uh, artificial intelligence to draw, to get a picture of this, right? So you won't find this anywhere, 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 right? Because this is from, it's an AI generated picture. Wow. But basically, if the whole earth, you, you see how big the earth is? If the whole earth is like a canvas, and if all the oceans, Pacific Ocean, every different oceans are different color inks, okay? Because when you're drawing something, you know, you need ink, right, to draw it on the canvas. The whole earth is, is, is the canvas. All the oceans are ink. And all the trees, if you dip it and draw, right, if you're using the tree to dip inside the ocean and then paint it or draw it, Goddess Saraswati herself will not be able to complete all the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Okay? So we're just reading one pastimes of Lord Krishna today, right? But... Um, and, and, and during every pastime, pastime is called as Leela, 
godliness is hidden or at least partially hidden. Okay? To have that completion of the past time. Right? If Krishna is not wrapped in the coins of Kaliya, because Krishna can easily, by his looks, he can kill. Then what's the point? Srimad Bhagavatam will be zero pages, right? So, always godliness is hidden or partially hidden during every Leela. And past tense means Lord ex exhibiting the vulnerability to increase the loveability. Is that not a nice one? So, Lord Krishna is exhibiting his vulnerability to increase the loveability, love, loveability, loveability of all the devotees. Okay. So, very rare that we have wonderful pastimes. There are so many, but Srimad Bhagavatam has got so many pastimes and today we are fortunate to hear about this wonderful pastime that took place when Lord Krishna was about six years old. We'll read that. Okay. So, is Kalya a, a snake or a serpent? Serpent. What's the difference? Okay, so I just put here. So, denotation means literal meaning. Connotation means it's, you can say it's an implied meaning, much more, one level below. Okay? So, we're not getting too much into Shakespeare and language, but we just need to know because sometimes we say Kalia is a snake, sometimes Kalia is a serpent. As, as they mentioned, Kalia is a serpent. And here, I put some examples here. When you say a rose, the actual literal meaning is a type of flower, right? But then the connotation, it, it shows beauty, right? La yeah, rose is beautiful like that. When we say darkness, it's absence of light, but then it also gives us different meaning, fear and mystery or sadness, right? And example, Tao, a bird, it's a bird in the pigeon family, but also it represents peace, purity, etc. So here, the serpent means it's actually a snake, which is an animal, by the way, right? So it's an animal, specifically, it's a reptile. But, um, you know, the serpent means it's more of a symbolic, literary, deeper meaning is there. And I put some examples, Kalia, Vasuki, Adisesha, Takshaka, uh, Garden of Eden Serpent. So we all know from, uh, you know, the Bible as well, right? God said, don't eat this apple from this particular tree. And the snake said, so what? You can uh, if you read Bible, right? So that's that's the serpent. Okay? So before we get on, there are two benedictions that are given to us by Lord Krishna himself. It's not by the author, it's not by anyone else. Lord Krishna himself is giving us two benedictions. So very quickly, we want a couple of you to read, the, one of you to read the first one. Anybody who didn't read it? If a mortal being attentively remember my command to you to leave Vrindavan and go to ocean, and narrate this account at sunrise and sunset, he will never be afraid of you. Thank you, bro. Never. Right? It's not like sometimes. Never. Be afraid of you means, it's not just Kaliya, any snake. So our Acharya has explained that. So what's the point? Kaliya, I don't even know who Kaliya is other than this past time. So why would I be scared of Kaliya? So, but we may be scared of snakes. Right? Especially when we are in that type of situation where there are a lot of snakes. Right? So you'll never be afraid. So, when it says account at sunrise and sunset, means whenever you are able to do it, even once if you are able to narrate it to someone else, then you get that benefit. And second one, anybody here from? If one bathes in this place of my pastimes and offers the water of this lake to the demigod, another worshipable personality, or if one observes a fast and duly worships and remembers me, he is sure to become free from all sinful reactions. Yeah, so anytime when there are some benedictions given, especially by Lord Krishna himself, you take it, you know, gladly accept it, right? Because we are in this uh, Kali Yuga, in this material world, we still have so much of negative reactions coming our way and more will be coming. So anytime it gives us a shortcut like this, grab it with both hands, right? And uh, for the benefit of everybody, remind me, so we'll sprinkle this. This is the actual, actual Yamuna water. Um, and this is not just from uh, Vrindavan, this is from the source of Yamuna. How many of you have been to Yamunotri? It's very difficult to go to Yamunotri. You can go to Gangotri, you can go to Badrinath, you can go to Kedarnath, but Yamunotri is a very, very challenging place to go to. And this is the source of Yamuna, the purest of pure water. Nobody is washing clothes, nothing on top, right? So there's nothing but glacier that is melting. And uh, you, can, um, you can only go there for about six kilometers up, like this, you can see some horses falling down and just sat. 
they'll take you in a talent wing. It's not like very royal one you'll see. It's really difficult. Um, or they take you in a horseback and horses can slip. So what I'm saying is very difficult to get to the source. So we have this water, we'll sprinkle it on everybody and that will be the closest to this. Okay. So if anybody bathes in this place, that's the best you can get to. Hare Krishna. Okay. So uh, this particular pastime, um, Lord Krishna enacted 125 years on this planet Earth. Correct? 125 years. Out of 125 years, the first 11 years were in Vrindavan, next 18 years in Mathura, and the last 96 years in Dwaraka. So when you add that 11 plus 18 plus 96 comes to 125. Now, Vrindavan and Mathura and Gokul are all in the same place, right? The 10 15 kilometers. But here you have Dwaraka is in the west end of India, which is in Gujarat, which is about 1,500 kilometers from here. Okay? Just to give you an uh, overview of where uh, these cities are. Take this one, you, you will never see this anywhere. So this, you can take a photograph of this uh, uh, slide here. So, you know, I put in all the past times of Lord Krishna that he enact, enacted in Gokul and in Vrindavan. So up to his 11 years, of his time, he was in this Gokul and Vrindavan pass, uh, Gokul and Vrindavan area. This Kaliya, chastising Kaliya, took place in this past time when he was in Vrindavan. Okay? So this will give you a good bird's eye view of all the past times that took place, not only in Gokul, but also in Vrindavan. Okay? So, so the good news is, did you all realize that Krishna killed so many of these demons. Calf demon, snake demon, mass demon, you name it. He never used any of his chakra, any of his gada, nothing. So in Vrindavan, he never touched any of the weapons. Have you realized that? So with Chakra Sura, he just was a little baby, just kicked his leg on the cart and then he died, right? So you can go through Trinavata, he just hugged him a little tightly, he died, right? You can go through all the past ten. never Krishna used a weapon in Gokul and in Vrindavan. Okay? Yes? So, so, so what was the age of Krishna when he moved from Gokul to Vrindavan? So, so he was here, you can see a Damodalila, he was three and a half years. So around about four years, he moved to Vrindavan. Just that was because too many demons were here. And they got more demons here and more in Mantra. It's all divine pastime. But then because of the you know problems created by demons, he was moved from about four years or so, approximately four years to seven, seven, 11 years. So about seven years or so here. Because we know that um, there is, uh, did I miss that? Oh, did I miss that? Okay. Go over the Leela. 18, number 18. Ah, it's here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so this took place when he was seven. So this is approximately six years old. Okay. Okay, so this is from Garga Samhita. Very quickly, I'm going to go through this. So there are two great saints. Okay, one is called as Veda Sira Muni. And then there was another person by the name of Ashwa Sira Muni. Okay, two of them are there. So if you want to read it, it's fine, but I can you know, narrate this. Right? So basically, Veda Siramuni was meditating in a cave close to, you can say, Gujarat, okay, Vindhya Hill. So he's, he's meditating there. And then another saint comes, Aswashira Muni comes there, and he says, I also want to meditate in your cave. And he gets so upset. How can you come to my cave and meditate? Even though it's not like he owns that cave and he's <laughs> got the property in his name, it's a public cave. So Veda Siddhamuni was meditating there, Aswa Siddhamuni comes and he says, I'm going to meditate. I'll just go sit in one corner and meditate. No, you cannot meditate in my cave. So there's a big fight that is going on between them. And this original person who's sitting there, he's cursed by the other person saying, you are hissing like a snake. So you, Veda Siddhamuni, who's been sitting here and meditating, do not allow me to come and meditate here. You will become a snake in your next life. And this person, Veda Siramani, counter curses him saying, you are taking a revenge on me like a crow, so I'm going to curse you to become a crow. Okay? Both are great personalities, so that whatever they curse came uh, to be true, 
So, uh, and then he says, you'll become a snake. So this Aswashira Muni is saying, you'll become a snake. And also you'll be afraid eternally of Garuda. Okay, Garuda eats the snake and we go through that as to why. Okay? And then both of them, um, you know, hold, and, and I got this from one of the um, experiments that was said. Actually, they say crow can have enmity towards human being because they can remember something up to 17 years. Okay? So there is a reason why he's saying, I'm going to curse you as a crow. Crow can take revenge. Okay? So everybody follow so far? Simple. There are two personalities. Veda Siramuni was meditating on the cave. He does not want the second person, Aswashiramuni, to come and meditate even in uh, a little far away. So both curse each other. One, one is cursed to become a snake and another one and become afraid of Garuda. And the other one is cursed to become a crow. Okay. Now, Lord Vishnu comes. So this is very typical of Lord Vishnu, right? Whenever there is a curse, I put the example here or in the next one, right? Anybody remembers any other place where Lord Vishnu came and sort of nullified, not nullified, modified the curse? Vijay and Jaya. Well, very good. Jaya and Vijay are two, right? So we'll read that. So he came here. So Veda Sira Muni becomes a serpent. Okay? There will be quiz in the end. Okay? I will raise my hand like this to give you a clue. <laughs> Veda Sira Muni becomes a serpent Kaliya and Aswashira Muni becomes a crow Bhusanti. Bhusundi, different uh, ways that is pronounced, but Bhusundi is, is supposed to have transcendental knowledge, right? So, from Ramayana, you'll remember his name. So, Vishnu positively intervenes in the curse, just like Jaya and Vijaya, and what he says that? So, he says, you will become the son of Kashyapa and Khatru, and then I, Lord Krishna, will come and dance on your forehead, so that the imprints will be left on your forehead, and you'll never be afraid of Garuda. So it's a positive influence on the curse. He's saying, both Brahmanas curse each other. I cannot undo that curse, but I can modify it and make it much better. And then he said, you will be Bhusandi. The Kaka Bhusandi was a famed crow in Ramayana. For those of you who have been to Jagannath Puri Temple, how many of you have been to Jagannath Puri Temple? There is a wonderful kund there. So in that kund, actually you can see the crow right at the bottom, right? So this crow finally dipped into that and took forearm form and then went back home back to garden. So if you go to Rohini Kundar. So we know this Jaya and Vijaya Pastor Prabhu mentioned it nicely. So whether you want three lifetimes as demons retaining enmity towards Vishnu or seven lifetimes as devotees separated from Vishnu. They said no, no, no. Three lifetimes itself too far away from you. So we'll take this option. And that's why they were Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha. Next is uh, Ravana Kumbhakarna, then Sishupal and Tandavakra before they went back uh, as Yes. So it is said, Prabhu, that even Kakusundi is still, as of today, he is giving the Ramayana. You know, uh, the there are different um, different uh, versions to it. All of them are true. But uh, if you go to Jagannath Puri, there is this wonderful kund there. And you can see this uh, Bhusundi there at the bottom. There is a Brahmin who will keep on collecting money when you go there. And you can touch the crow as well. It's not a real crow, obviously. But, but why, it's the, so why is he at the... Uh, because to show that he took the bath there before he became the forearm form, Vishnu's form, right? So that's the process. So when he is inside, uh, it, it, it's not the, uh, it's called Rohini Kun, so you can go and touch the crow there. So it's supposed to be very auspicious if you touch, because he's full of transcendental knowledge, so you get some knowledge from there. Um, okay, so uh, this one is, you know, Lord does is, uh, you know, the past tense of the Lord or how we bless us is very, very unique, right? It is said, not even a blade of grass moves without the permission of Lord uh, Krishna. We all agree that, agree to that, right? So it's a long story, but I'm just going to, it's too small for all of you to see that, but I'm just going to narrate this very beautiful story. You would have heard this many times, but it's worth telling that. So once a king and his minister, along with many other people, went for hunting because they want to hunt the wild animals so that the wild animals does not come into the city and kill the people. So he goes there in the horse and suddenly a cobra goes. The horse lifts the leg in, because he's scared of cobra. The king falls down. When the king falls down, the snake bites his finger. Oh. So the poison is going to go through his finger to his heart. Before that, the king had the presence of knowledge and cut his own finger. The king cut his own finger and he was bleeding. Around time, the minister, who's a devotee of the Lord, said, My dear king, it's all by the mercy of the Lord. 
it's, even if it's true, it's not a perfect time to say that. So the king was very upset. He said, now all my other people, take this minister, throw him in the jail, okay? But I want to show that not everything is done by the mercy of the Lord, and I'll show that I can do things differently. I'm going to go alone with this cut finger, blood is coming. I'm going to still go hunt the animals. So he goes, and then there are a group of bandits who actually get hold of him to take him for animal, uh, for human sacrifice. You know this, right? So this happens yeah. uh, even in Srimad Bhagavatam 5.9. I have it here. Chada Bharat was almost sacrificed, right? Uh, because they are looking for somebody to be given as a sacrifice. So here, they take him. Oh, he's a royal blood. He's a king. He's royal blood. So the goddess will be more happy. So they take him, give him shower, and then when they are inspecting, because you cannot sacrifice somebody who is incomplete. So they look at him and he sees his finger is missing. Say, oh my God, we got him royal blood, but we cannot offer him as a sacrifice because he's incomplete. So it will have negative con consequence if we offer him to the goddess. Then, um, you know, they say, so we cannot offer you. They let him go. He's so glad because he almost died and now he's got his life back. So he's very happy. So maybe this is because of the mercy of the Lord. So he goes to the jail and he meets his minister. My dear minister, you know, um, you know, I understand everything is by the will of the Lord. Now I agree, I should have almost got killed, but because my finger got cut, I got saved. By the way, why did I get so angry with you for telling the truth that I asked these people to put you in jail? And he said, it's also by the mercy of the Lord, because if you didn't put me in the jail, I didn't have any of my fingers cut, so I'm a complete person, then I would have been killed by these bandits, right? So everything that is happening is for a reason. And here also, Lord, you know, allowing these curses to go ahead, but modifying the score so that uh, curse so that both of them get their blessings. So now Kalya uh, or, or, or um, you know this particular Veda ceremony is being cursed to become a snake, but he's got his own parents. He just doesn't mystically becomes a snake, right? So these are the things that it takes time to put this together. So you won't see this anywhere. So if you feel like taking a picture, take it. Um, you will be reading about 25, 30 verses in this one slide. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam will go into many, many verses to get to this. But basically, Daksha 1 and Daksha 2. So Daksha 1 is the one who is the son of uh, uh, Brahma. And then we know the past times of Daksha, right? So Daksha's wife was... Anybody? Sati. Sati. And Sati committed, she self-immolated because of... So that was done. That was Daksha. He got a... Um, um, Daksh. So is this... Sorry? Daksha's wife was Prasuti. Well, Daksha's daughter. daughter. We'll get to that. But wife is Sati. Sati committed... She no, self-immolated. Right? No, daughter, 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 daughter. Daughter. Sorry. Daughter. Uh, and then she married Lord Shiva and then uh, self-immolation. I, I take it part. Sorry. Okay, so you'll get to see that in the next uh, slide as well. So this is Daksha 2. Daksha 2 is the son of Prachetas. You know the nine Prachetas that we have, the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Daksha 2 is, um, you know, the son of Prachetas and then he and his wife Ashitni got 10,000 sons, another 10,000 sons, you know, Narada Muni game, and then he made them into Brahmacharis. You remember those pastors. They're not getting into the sixth canto, right? It's all from sixth canto. But then we are more focused on the 60 daughters of Daksha, right? So out of the 60 daughters, 10 daughters got married to Yamaraj, then 17 to Kashyapa, so on and so forth, right? So we are focused on 17 daughters married to Kashyapa, and then these are the 17 daughters, but you can see all of them are married to Kashyapa. Kashyapa married all the daughters. And uh, the most important ones, you can see here, Kashyapa and Vinita, I'm raising my hand. Remember what it was for? Who is in the end, okay? So Kashyapa and Vinita, from them, they gave birth to Garuda Aruna. Aruna is the chariot driver of Sun God. And then Kashyapa Muni and Kadru, they gave birth to all varieties of serpents, including Kalya. Okay? And then there are many, many other uh, wives as well. But one other important uh, marriage is Kashyapa and Aditi because Vamanade, who is Lord, you can say Krishna himself, right? So Krishna and Kalya, Krishna and Garuda are all, you can say, stepbrothers, right? Because same father, different wives, okay? So Kalya and Garuda are brothers, same father but different mothers, and all living entities, animals, insects, plants, you can see locusts were all born from the aquatics, 
lions and tigers, Gandharvas, bad spirits, creeper, everybody from this. So we are all coming from a divine source, right? That's why it's important Bhagavad Gita 5.18 Krishna, Krishna teaches, right? So there's a beautiful correlation between Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So the past tense explained Bhagavad Gita really well. Vidya Vanya Sampane, Brahmani Gaviyasthini, Suni Cheva Swapakecha, Pandita Samadarshana. So humble sage by virtue of knowledge, see with equal vision, the learned and gentle Brahmana, cow, elephant, cow, because everybody is coming from the divine source. Okay? So take a picture of this. This will, um, this will clear many of the problems that uh, you may have been having because this is scattered all over Srimad Bhagavatam, but this is consolidated in one uh, slide here. Okay, so why, why uh, are the sons from different wives fighting with each other? Okay? It's common, we always see, right? Brothers fight with each other, sisters fight with each other. But here they're supposed to be more godlier, but they also fought. Again, very uh, detailed uh, you know, um, explanation of what this past is. So basically what we're trying to get to is why this brother and this brother, you know, they, they are co-brothers or it's a step-brothers from the same father, different mother. Why they are eternally against each other? Why is the snake and the Garuda are against each other? So during the churning of the ocean of milk, there was a horse that came out. First was Surabi the cow, second was Uchai Shava the horse. The horse is supposed to be milky white in color, like the moon. But the two mothers, or you can say two wives of Kaliya, uh, two wives of uh, Kashyapa, right? So they had a fight. Kadru as well as Vinita had a challenge. They said, oh, Ucheshava is white in color, one person said, and the other person said, no, 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 Ucheshava, though, it's not white in color, it's black in color. See, such a silly thing, it exploded into something unimaginable. And what they did was, the mother of Kaliya, Kadru, she knew she's going to lose the bet. She came to know after she said, Okay, anybody who's losing between you and me will become an eternal servant of the other person. After she made that bet, they found out that this horse is actually white in color. But she's the mother of all the snakes. So she asked all the black cobras to go and surround this Uchaikshav of the horse fully, so it looks black in color. Okay? It's a white horse, but by cheating, all the cobras covered this white horse in like, like it looked like black horse. And then when Garuda came to know, eternally is against snakes because snakes are the ones who covered that white horse. Okay, So this is the uh, reason why, according to Mahabharata, why there is this eternal fight between Garuda and the snakes. Okay? So, Kalya was born and then um, he lived in this Ramanaka highland. And it is said, according to Srila Prabhupada and uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam it says, um, it is Fiji Islands. Fiji Islands are about 12,000 kilometers away from India, Vrindavan. Okay? So here, these snakes were all happily living, but then Garuda used to go there because Garuda's natural food is snake. Okay? So let's not think in, it's a devotee, why should he? It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, clearly Garuda's natural food, even though he's a carrier of Lord Vishnu, is snake and fish. Okay. So you may construe it in different ways. Can devotees have dogs? Can we, whatever it is. But I'm just stating the fact that it is said that the natural food of Karuda, the carrier of uh, Lord Vishnu, is snakes and fish, and legally is entitled to eat here. Okay, the past time. So here, Kalia lived with his family in this island, Ramanaka Island, and there are so many snakes there. But because Karuda is a huge snake. He was eating so many, Garuda was a huge bird, he was eating so many snakes and they were almost uh, going into extinction, right? So they said, no, 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 Garuda, you cannot eat all of us all together. We will offer you some snakes, that means their own servant snakes, poor servant snakes. Uh, they'll offer, and then some food stuff as well, below a particular tea, tree, once a month. But what did Kalia do? Kalia would intercept those offerings that was meant for Garuda and he will eat it. So far we are okay? Yeah. It's clear? Mm -hmm. So we talked about the curse and then, you know, uh, uh, Ashwa Shiramani and then we have Veda Shiramani, Veda Shiramani becomes uh, uh, Kalia and then he's living in this Fiji island. But what he does is if he was quietly eating his own snake, then we will not have this pastime. But because he intercepts the food of Garuda and now Garuda is upset with him. So you can see Garuda here 
and he found out where Kalia is and he is going to attack Kalia. So Kalia and Garuda get into a fight and then they, you know, he tries to bite him and then Garuda finally strikes him with his left wing and, um, and right away Kalia, I can see the fight there, he moves 12,000 kilometers away to Vrindavan. So don't think in terms of a snake going little by little across the road in Loi Bazaar and coming all the way, right? These are, you know, these are wonderful personalities, so it doesn't have to go on the ground, they fly and go. So you can see 12,000 kilometers is traveled west, northwest of Fiji Island, and he takes shelter in Yamuna. It says Yamuna River, Yamuna River at that time was next to Yamuna Lake. Uh, Yamuna, sorry, Yamuna Lake was next to Yamuna River, but for all practical purposes, think in terms of Yamuna. Okay? So that's Saubari Muni there, and he took shelter of Yamuna, let's say river slash lake, because he was already cursed, Garuda was cursed by Saubari Muni, not to go near Yamuna River, because he had eaten the leader of the fish, fish and the fishes were so upset with him they complained to Saubari Muni and then Saubari Muni cursed Garuda if you ever come near Vrindavan you will die even though you are the uh, carrier of the Lord you will die so this curse was only known to Kalia so instead of apologizing to Garuda for eating his own food he knew that there is a way that he can go and do whatever he wants here because Garuda cannot come here that okay? Mm. So yes. In brief what was Saubari, what was the reason why Saubari him, yeah, so Saubari Muni cursed him, uh, cursed him because, see, um, unfortunate fishes in the lake had become most unhappy at the death of the leader. So, uh, Garuda had eaten the leader of the fish there in Yamuna area, and because of that, all the fishes didn't have a leader, and they went and complained to Saubari Muni. Why Saubari Muni? Where does he meditate? Not on the shores, he meditates within the water of Yamuna. So, he's one amongst the fishes. We know the past time, right? So he saw two of the fishes, then he got married to the 50 daughters of King Mandata, etc. Right? So he cursed Garuda from eating his natural food. So that was a it was a apara that you did, we'll read that, right? So because of the fishes lost their leader and they complained to him, he had to curse Garuda that if you ever come here and eat the fish, you will die. So only um, uh, Kalia knew about this curse, so he knew that if he comes to uh, Vrindavan area, he will be safe and Garuda will not attack him. Even though he ate his food there that was meant for Garuda. So here, Saubari Muni was very proud of his spiritual advancement, right? And then he cursed the uh, carrier of the Lord, but it is supposed to be a Vaishnava Apara, what he did. Even though it's a curse, you know, it is a curse against uh, Vaishnava. And what he wanted was, he did not, and he unnecessarily attracted the poison to come into the Vrindavan. You'll see that in the next few slides, right? Everything became poisonous, birds died, yeah. plants died. Yeah. If he didn't curse him, then uh, Kalia would not have come all the way from there, right? So in one way, if you see, so Sage Saubarin also stopped the hungry Vaishnava from eating his natural food, okay? So, because of those offense, right? So then he had the desire to copulate and then he married 50 daughters of King Mandata and then he sacrificed the whole meditation. Yeah. All of you remember Saubari Muni's pastime, right? But Saubari Muni is connected with this particular pastime. Because of the curse that he, you know, threw on Garuda, um, Kalia was able to come all the way from uh, Fiji Island all the way to Vrindavan and take shelter. Okay, is that clear? Any questions, please ask. Uh, you know, if I'm not able to answer, someone else will answer as well. Because we are going at a jet speed. Jet speed. <laughs> so fasten your seatbelts much more. Okay. So we need to go a little faster. So because Kalia is there, he's a poisonous person, and then there is uh, birds that are flying up because of the vapor that is going up because of the heat that is generated from the Yamuna water. All the birds are falling dead. And because of the water vapor going far away, carried by the breeze, all the plants and creepers are all dead. Fishes are dying. So there was so much of contamination, poisonous contamination in the water, right? So vegetation is also being uh, killed. And then Lord Krishna jumps from a Kadamba tree into this water. So what is your first question? Prabhu, you just mentioned that all the trees were dead. How can there be one tree where J Krishna can jump from? That's not an actual, that's how we need to read the past time, right? Then we get all the answers. You're not questioning, but then there are answers from within. Sorry? 
No, the Kadambatri is there. Why? Why so, didn't I? There is a story, right? I don't know. The yeah, so it's a good, good question, right? So here, in Matsya Puran, it is there, right? So Matsya Puran states, when this Garuda was carrying this pot of nectar after the churning of ocean of milk, if you remember, Dhanvantri brought this pot of nectar. And then here, Garuda is taking it to the heavenly planets. As he was taking, he's hungry as a bird. So he keeps this pot of nectar, according to Matsya Puran, on top of this Kadamba tree, and he goes and eats the fish, and he eats the fish, the leader's fish, and he gets cursed by uh, Saubari Muni, never to come back. It all happened in the same time. So because it is said that even until today, the impervious, it is impervious to the poisonous effect. That's the actual tree. I've been to that tree, touched it, and all of you would have done the same. If you go to Vrindavan, this tree is still there. Yeah. Okay, close to Yamuna River, the Kadamba tree, where Krishna is supposed to have jumped into the water. Now, when you see that, there is absolutely no water nearby, right? So it's, we are talking about 5,000 um, you know, years away, right? The waters have receded and moved, taken different course. But the actual tree is supposed to be there. You can go and touch the same Kadamba tree, okay? So the surrounding lands got flooded when Lord jumped in, you know? You can see when a, you know, digressing here, and a fat person jumps into a swimming pool, you can see a lot of water will splash. So what is so great when Lord Krishna, the biggest, you know, the most powerful personality jumps into the water? Of course, the water splashed and it says 100 bow lengths. I did some calculation, it's about multiplied by six, about 600 feet, right? So 600 feet, the water went. So it's, it's lot, but it's not too much. Technically, whole earth could have been, you know, inundated, assuming there's enough water there, right? But Krishna had to do this, not too much of water should be splashing because the water is poisonous. It will kill more of the uh, vegetation, etc. Right? So to an extent, it it splashed, but at that time, you know, all the, uh, in that radius, all the plants were anyway killed even before that. So envious Kalia hears the sound. Who's coming to my property? Now this is a significant lesson learned, and I have it in the next slide. When this pre, when this sage was a um, you know, the sage who did not allow the second person to come. No, you should not come to my place, even though it's a public cage, right? Cave, sorry. The same thing he's doing in this Kalia Lake. Nobody should be here. So if we don't change this I, me, myself, and ego in this life, even we get another body, our, our attitude is going to be the same. You see? So unless we change it consciously, it's going to come with us the next step. So significant here. So you can see, Kalya was Veda Siramuni in his previous life and did not like any other outsider coming, coming to his cave. This resulted in him becoming a snake due to the curse. Right? We all agree. In, his inner nature has not changed even though the outer appearance, outer appearance, now in the snake body has changed. It is critical that we change our invisible enemies like lust, anger, envy, pride, greed, etc. Pride, sorry, and illusion in this life itself so that it does not come with us in the future lives of bodies. Significant, right? So no, God is not going to save, take our ego out like he took it out from, you know, it's up to us, right? Whatever we have, ego, anger, etc. Clear case, right? He had it in the previous life, next life he's continuing to have it. So unless it's changed. So here, fortunate Krishna sees the beautiful form of the Lord, right? He sees this beautiful, attractive, shining, glowing, white cloud, chest bearing, the Shivatsa, smiling face, etc. Another significant lesson to be learned. So, Kalya sees Lord Krishna's face to face and still he attacks him, you'll see that. So, we can come to the temple every Sunday, all the temples we can go to see the Lord face to face in the deity form. Okay? It's good. But is it good enough? It's good, but is it good enough? I put some examples here. From the scriptures, we read so many demons also saw Krishna face to face. Has anybody seen here Krishna face to face? Face to face. We are all seeing the deity form. These demons saw Krishna face to face, but did they change anything? Did anything change? No. no. Putana saw Lord Krishna face to face. She still wanted to kill him. She didn't want to accept him as a god. Same thing with Shakadasura, Trinavata. I put in green. The fruit seller recognized like Lord Krishna was God and she gave him the fruits. In Vrindavan, Vatsasura, Bakasura, Agasura, um, then you have Denukasura, Kalia, Pralambasura. All of them saw Lord Krishna face to face. But did they change anything? So just because we see the Lord in the temple does not mean 
much unless we change ourselves. God will help us change. Everybody follows this. Very important. Just because we say, okay, I want to go see the Lord. Thank you. All of them saw the Lord. What happened? Did anything change? No. No. And we can go into Chaitanya Charitamrita where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had two servants, right? One got into the, um, you know, Bhattatris in Kerala. They are bad and you know what had happened, right? Same thing. Second one, second servant also. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there with him. And Chaitanya, he was going somewhere. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, where, where are you going? Where? Oh, I'm going to see Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. He's come back again. And Kaliya said, He's laughing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is laughing. I am Krishna. I am here. And he's saying Krishna is there in the water. No, no, Krishna is there. And he went there. This is Chaitanya Charitam. They go there. And then he comes back putting his head in. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually you know, hit him like this in the in the head. So uh, what happened? Did you see Krishna? Uh, no, it is actually a fisherman with the light and trying to catch the fish. So they thought it was the Kaliya's jewel that was there. right? So just, and he was the personal servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just because he's seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu every day, did it make much difference? No. So again, it's something that we need to think through, right? So coming to the temple is one, but we need to change internally and have the devotion towards the Lord and all the examples that you can see other than the three that is highlighted in green. Everyone saw Krishna face to face for a long time. Didn't change much. Okay. So Kaliya, after seeing this beautiful Krishna, what does he do? He wraps him in a coil and then he bites his chest. Why does he bite his chest? Usually in the previous past time when, you, when somebody bites, when the cobra bites the finger, it takes a while for the poison to go to the chest and get him killed. If you bite in the chest, right away the heart is right there. So Kaliya is, you know, want to kill him right away, want to kill Krishna right away. And Krishna jumped into the water and this water vapor itself is killing all the birds and plants. Does it have any impact on Krishna? Jumping into the poisonous water, no impact. Uh, getting bitten by Kaliya in the chest, which is next to the heart, no impact. Right? So that's that why Krishna is God, right? No impact at all. So usually the snake bites and goes into the bush, right? Here the snake bites and holds him in the middle of the lake. So no 911 can come very easily, right? So no chance at all, right? If it was a normal human being. But that's God. That's the closest I can do for some visual effects. Okay, so all the members of the coward family fell unconscious, right? When they came to know, not just men, but cows and bulls and all of them were unconscious knowing this. And it says three types of fearful omens were seen in Vrindavan. One is in the sky. You can see a lot of, um, you know, meteors are falling. And then the second one is on the earth. There is tremors, earthquake, little bit of tremors are going on. And also the bodies of the living entities. Have you seen sometimes your left eye, you know, just goes up and down fast? Or the right eye? You know what it says? It says, the bodies of living, in, uh, the shivering or quivering of left eye for men and women, left side, if it goes like this, that means it is not a good sign. Something bad is going to happen. Right? So, um, and imminent danger is going to happen. Again, don't go too much into it, but again, that's what it says. Right? Left side of the body, when it does something bad. Right side is supposed to be good. It's different for uh, the men and women. Yeah, men and left women. Left side for the men. Yeah. And, and with, yeah, men, opposite. Right side is bad. Yeah. Left side for the women, uh, if it fixes, it's good. It's good. So left side for the women is good. Right side for the men is good. Okay. Um, so here, these are sure signs of impending doom, it says. And I took something else from uh, Jyotisha Shastra, right? You know, here you don't have too much lizards or no lizards, right? In India, you have lizards. So if a lizard falls to the right side, it means that that person will obtain wealth. And if it falls on the left side, then somebody in that particular family is going to die. So again, I'm just stating what is there, right? You can call it superstition or what? But these are facts. And Srimad Bhagavatam says the left side for men and right side of the women, uh, that means it's bad sign. So that's how they know something is wrong with Krishna, something is bad uh, happening there. Okay? And uh, Nanda Maharaj and all of them rush towards Yamuna because of these inauspicious omens, right? And then why does it happen? So here beautifully Jiva Goswami, Goswami says, when the Devatas want to convey this information that Krishna is probably... Uh, uh, not in, uh, let's say he's in danger. 
even though it's not in danger. If they want to tell, how will they know there's no phone call and things like that, right? So they're far away. So these devatas create these tremors, these meteors and everything. That's a signal for everybody. Something is going on with Krishna, let's go there. And how do they know where Krishna is? You'll see in the next slide. So here, and Balaram also knows, right? Balaram didn't travel with Krishna in this particular pastime. So he's coming with all the Vrajvasis and the cowherd men, even though he knows about Lord Krishna, he just smiled and he did not disclose anything because he will be interfering in Yoga Maya's arrangement. Yoga Maya is the one that arranges all the pastimes of Lord Krishna, right? So Mahamaya and Yoga Maya are like the electricity, right? So you can plug it and you can have a heater, you can plug there and you can have an air condition. So air condition and heater is from the same source electricity. So from the same source of Krishna, you have Mahamaya and Yoga Maya. Mahamaya, you can think of M, material world. M, material world. Mahamaya, material world. And Yoga Maya is for the spiritual world, okay? So, That's a good yeah, easy way to remember always the word, which is Mahamaya. But we Yoga always Maya, get right? So you remember one, then you'll remember the other one. So Mahamaya, starting with M, material word. Right? So how do they know where Krishna was? Now they know all these signs are there, tremors are there, meteors are falling, their left eye is being, uh, you know, quivering, right eye for the others are quivering. So they look at the footprint of Lord Krishna. So they look at footprint of Lord Krishna and then they go towards Yamana. As you can see here, I took this from Govinda Leela Amrita, chapter 16. The beautiful, uh, you know, the markings on Lord Krishna's lotus feet is described wonderfully here. Just like the FBI, you know, when FBI is catching somebody, they'll see the tire mark, right? This, uh, this uh, killer was driving a Lamborghini and he had this car tire with this ridges. So they look at the ridges and they go. So like that, they're looking at Lord Krishna's footprints Barley Khan, Chakra, etc. So you can see in the right uh, right feet, there are 11 auspicious symbols. And in the left feet, there are 8 auspicious symbols. Okay? So I think we did this in one of the sessions and we can do it at some part if we have it. Right? So there is so much of significance for each one of them. So you can see a Barley Khan. Barley Khan is here. Disc is here. Lotus here. Upward curving line. A gourd here. Right? So Umbrella is here. Um, then you have blackberries, etc. So they see all these marks and they go towards Lord Krishna. That's how they know Lord Krishna is now in the um, you know, clutches of Kaliya. So seeing Lord Krishna within the coils of black serpent, all the younger and older gopis were burning with great sorrow. What can they do? They're helplessly standing a kilometer or two away from where Kali is holding Lord Krishna. They can't do anything. They're helplessly watching. But one thing is, what they were doing is, they were recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So they're telling Mother Yasoda, don't worry, Krishna will be successful because he already killed another great snake, Adasura, because that pastime has already taken place. No, 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 nothing will happen. He will kill all of these demons. And then, uh, so, so gopis are remembering Lord Krishna, not only when times are good, but more importantly, when it is Difficult situation as well. So again, these are all lessons for us. Why are we here today, right? Not just for this past time that I took it, taken place years ago, but how we can imbibe and internalize the lessons learned. So when we are in trouble, again, think of all the great things that Lord Krishna has done. And not only in past times perspective, but in your life as well. Think of all the trophies and uh, certificates that you had in your life, right? Those are all confirmation of Krishna's mercy in the past, right? When you look at all your certificates and medals and everything in the past, he supported you, saved you in the past. Why would he not do that again in the future, right? So here, they are recounting all the wonderful past times of Lord Krishna that had taken place before. And Lord Balaram is holding back Nanda Maharaj and others from entering Amina because they want to dive and go. The poisonous water is there, but still they don't care about their own lives. They want to save Lord Krishna. And seeing the acute dis distress of residents of the Krishna finally rose up. He said, enough is enough. I'm not going to imitate. Remember in the very beginning stage, I had one slide where it says, what is lovability? You remember that? Vulnerability. Yeah, so vulnerability is sort of shown to increase the lovability, right? So now, see, Krishna shows as though he's vulnerable. And you can see the love and affection and of all the gopis and everyone else, right? That's what he wanted. And now he says, now, if I continue this, they're going to be, 
you know, maybe some of them will dive into the water, so might as well stop it. Swami says, you know, that uh, the, the most important thing in devotional service is absorption. Just one word, absorption. So gopis were non-stop absorbed in thinking of Krishna all the time, whether happiness or distress doesn't matter. They yeah. absorbed in the in Krishna. In Krishna consciousness. And they are, see, bringing in the crucial past time, right? Oh, snake past time. This is a snake. Snake has caught him. Don't worry, there was already another snake that tried to catch him and the snake was killed, right? So it's almost like uh, for any problem, it's Krishna's pastime is the solution, right? I don't want to downgrade it, but uh, you know, when when uh, devotees go on some overseas trip, all they do is take Tylenol. Headache, Tylenol. Leg pain, Tylenol. For everything, Tylenol, right? So here for any problem that they have or no problem and they're satisfied and happy, is Krishna's pastimes, right? So that's a, this is a real life example during this exigency. All they thought was Krishna, and they were able to tell even the mother of Krishna these past times so that she can also remember, right? That's the best that I can do. <laughs> so seeing the acute distress of the residents of Vrindavan, Lord Krishna rose up from the bonds of Kaliya, thus ending his imitation as an ordinary mortal, right? So he expands himself. Just think of a balloon, right? We have a rubber band on top, right? Multiple rubber bands. And then you inflate the balloon bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So then automatically the, the fangs of, uh, you know, the hooves of Kaliya had to uncoil, right? So tormented by the expanding body of Krishna, Kaliya had to release him, okay? And then Lord Krishna begins to dance on Kaliya's hooves. Now, there is also this footprint, the dust of his lotus feet. How lucky is Kaliya? The, you know, everywhere we need dust of lotus feet of devotees and then Krishna. Here the dust of uh, Krishna's lotus feet is there on not just one hood, but not 101 hood, all thousand hoods, right? So he's got the permanent foot marks of uh, Lord Krishna, like the FBI cap. I can just put up an analogy there, right? When you have an FBI cap or a police cap, not the fake one, really when you are in that... When you see that person, you'll walk away, right? You give them some respect. So Lord Shiva's dance brings about destruction to this creation. Lord Krishna's dance brings an end to the miseries of his devotees. When you say miseries of devotees, Kaliya as well as the Vrajvasis there, right? All of them are suffering. So I can think of something, right? So imagine Bharatanatyam dancer trying to dance on a treadmill. You know, treadmill, all of you, especially put this inclination on 10 and then try to do some dance on it. Not just with the motion of this but try to do it the opposite way within within 10 seconds will be falling down right uh, or even worse think of a rapidly moving stage that turns 360 degrees so this is like the most powerful uh, snake and krishna is beautifully dancing on top right and i put this example here i was in this in this city Mexi cali mexico and california border right there was an earthquake a few years ago, 7.2 magnitude. And I was, the first time in my life, in my life, I experienced an earthquake, okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing compared to, I mean, I'm not even saying, but I can see, it just moves, the, you know, the whole foundation moves, right? It's an unbelievable experience, because 7.2 is not a small one, right? Usually 4.2 itself, you, this was one of the biggest ones, there was a lot of damage and things like that, but I'm just, I can correlate to a, you know, minuscule level, 0 0.0001%, how off balance you are just to stand. Forget about dancing on it, right? So, you would have seen this. I tried to put in a video of this, how this throws people. You can think this as an example, right? Matadors. So, again, in Spain, this is very common, right? So, you can, the, the bull will not allow anybody to sit on him, right? And that's what Kaliya is doing, but no problem. Krishna is dancing as though it's a firm footing uh, stage there. So Krishna is again beautifully dancing in this uh, Kaliya's uh, 101 prominent heads, but there are a total of 1,000 heads, it is said. Okay? So it goes on and on for a long period. You can see here, right? This is a beautiful picture of uh, Kaliya trying to bite uh, Krishna again and again. So these are all pictures from various sources, not from one source. And once Krishna started dancing, you can see all the great personalities from all over the heavenly planets, Siddhas, Gandharvas, Charanas, everybody started coming. And it's easy for us to understand, right? Even in the material world, I mean, I'm just putting this because right now this is what is happening in the world. <laughs> so you have this person and you can see all the great, so-called other great person. For those of you who know others, you can see them. You can see Hemas Dhoni, the cricketer is here, but all these actors are surrounding him. 
Same thing, Kamala Harris is there, all the famous people. So when a great person is there, not so great person close to him will always be surrounding him. Right? So when Krishna is there, everybody came, Gandharva, Siddha, Sharanas, they start playing Vrindanga because when Krishna is dancing, you need musical instruments, right? So they bring everything and they're starting to dance. Okay, so here Krishna starts, uh, sorry, Kaliya starts to exude poisonous waste from his eyes and vomits ghastly blood. And our Acharyas are explaining this means all the contamination is coming out, all the ego and the anger is all coming out. Krishna dancing brings out everything. And it is stated in Gopal the Champu by Jiva Goswami by the dance of Krishna, all 101 pools of Kaliya became weak like a loosened cobweb. So you see the cobweb here? Cobwebs, you can see cobwebs everywhere, not here, but in generally you'll see on the roof, right, in the corners. So if it is loosened with this, you just loosen it up, then how the cobwebs are. So all this thousand hoods are all fallen flat, almost dead, because of Krishna dancing, right? So the contamination is purged, and Kaliya is so lucky because the master is punishing the servant, right? That means if the master is doing a great servant. If the master is not punishing the servant, then the servant is supposed to be unlucky because his mistakes will be repeated and that will uh, follow up in the degradation of the soul. So here Kaliya is so lucky, contamination is purged and finally Kaliya takes shelter of Lord Krishna. Okay? So seeing Krishna's, uh, sorry, Kaliya's umbrellas like wood have been shattered, then the wives of Kaliya, they called us Naga Patnis. Naga Patnis, wife of Naga, right? Naga Patnis. Um, so they, what do they do? They place their little children in front of them, pay, pay obeisances to Lord Krishna, and then they are behind. Why? So always the helpless women, children, and old people deserve protection according to Vedas, right? So if you put the children, even if somebody is really angry with me, I have a beautiful kid with me, they will, the anger will go away, right? So children have got that uh, capacity to bring anybody's anger down. So they put the children down and then the saintly ladies started uh, offering wonderful, wonderful prayers, right? And that's why wives are called as better halves, okay? Even men are called as better halves, so it is called as Ardhangini, meaning half of the body, right? So when Kaliya's wives, they can feel the real pain of the husband. So even though the wife may not be there, but when a husband is having some problem, the wife will feel and vice versa. That's why husband and wife, they call called as better halves. Okay? So here, on behalf of Kaliya, the wives of Kaliya are actually praying to spare his life. Okay? So you can see all these wives, so they're all snakes, half snake you can say. But then they are all praying to Lord Krishna as Kaliya is about to die, right? So having Krishna dance on the head was very fortunate for Kaliya because the lotus feet of Krishna are Abhaya Charana. Abhaya Charana means it, meaning they reward freedom from the fear of material existence. We have going the Das Prabhu here. Where is he? So this is the author of this wonderful song. Remember, Bajahure Mana Srinandanandana Abhaya Charana Radindare. Remember that beautiful, beautiful budget, right? So he's so fortunate and no more fear because Abhaya Charan, that's the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So there's another beautiful painting here. All the Nagapatnis are here. They're helplessly watching, not diving into the water. So these are the prayers. So I want somebody to read this quickly. So these are first six humble statements by Nagapatnis and then there are prayers. I've selected few prayers only. I'm also keeping an eye on the time. So not to worry, we want somebody to be engaged in this. So maybe from back row, can you, are you able to see this? Yeah. Okay, can you read, the, not not the quotes, but just the verse from here to the black font, own sons. Okay, so just the first one? Yeah. Punishment. Sorry. The punishment to Kaliya certainly is just. Punishment imposed on the living being is partial as you need benefit. You are important, impartial. Impartial that you look equally upon your enemies and your sorry, on your enemies and your sons. And your own sons. Right? Because he's saying so impartial, because we know the past time of Narakasura. Narakasura is actually Lord Krishna's son. How? Put that there. So Varahadev's son, in that uh, past time where uh, he was with, uh, um, you know, Bhumi Devi, but the association of, uh, you know, the demons was there. So that's a different past time, Narakasura. 
So Narakasura is Lord Krishna's own son, but he was killed by Lord Krishna, right? And then 16,100, not 108, 16,100 queens had to be saved from that, if you remember that fast time. So that's the meaning of that. And the second one is, Prabhu, can you read this? The punishment? The punishment is a mercy as it drives away contamination. Like the doctor removing the disease of the patient, right? So you have to do it. Sometimes you need a knife because it might be a cancerous growth. Just you can't take a uh, cotton and take out the cancerous growth, right? You have to have a, a big sword or knife, right? So, and then more and more, right? So, uh, what hostilities this snake should have done? The wives are saying, how much hostility that this person would have done? And then the previous life he was? What's the name? Mm. Kalia's previous life. Vedashiram. 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 Very good. So, he did hostilities and see, it helped. If only he didn't actually have a problem with the other person, allowed him to go sit in one corner, many things would have been avoided. They would have got their own good things in different ways, right? Not just uh, by becoming a snake and Krishna trampling his head, etc. Um, the goddess of fortune always presses the feet of Vishnu, right? How much fortunate she was to do that. And just imagine how fortunate this Kaliya, not even pressing, Krishna is pressing his head like a massage, right? Painful massage, though. No? Um, then here, those who have attained the dust of your lotus feet never hanker for any kingship, uh, for the kingship of heaven and also can have all benedictions manifested before they simply by receiving the dust of his lotus feet. So, Kaliya is so fortunate. Who else had, um, I think I have it here, Bali, I thought I didn't do it. Yeah, Bali Maharaj is on. I was thinking, yeah, anyone else? Is? Yes, Bali Maharaj also was fortunate because Vishnu's head was placed, right? So, only these two that I can think of. If you have anyone else, can you think of anyone else? Kaliya and Bali Maharaj, right? Yes. Okay, so here are the prayers. So this is the must must memorize, right? Namastubhyam Bhagavate Purushaya Mahatmane Bhuta Vasaya Bhutaya Paraya Paramatmane. Beautiful. So this one is, uh, who didn't read? Can somebody read this English translation? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Prabhu, somebody is outside? Yeah. We offer our obeisances unto you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although present in the hearts of all living beings as a super soul, you are all pervasive. Although the original shelter of all created material elements, you exist prior to their creation. And although the cause of everything, you are transcendental to all material cause and effect, being the Supreme Spirit. Wonderful. So here, you are the cause of everything and you are transcendental. So it doesn't matter whether the snake bites you in the chest, nothing, no, nothing will impact you, right? So one thing which we need to remember is all the prayers in Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay? So you can think of uh, prayers of Gajendra, you can think of any prayers. This is a lesson for all of us. When you start praying, say for example, I have a severe pain in my leg. Okay? I'm just saying, we don't ask Krishna for material things in general, but you can see that they also ask for someone else. right? So the first thing is, my dear Krishna, I chant this Hare Krishna Mahamantra so that my leg gets better, pain is less. That's not what we do. You see, in all the prayers, first part or many sections of the prayers are praising the Lord. Nothing to do with your problem. You genuinely praise the Lord, right? You can see this is the same structure in all prayers. Srimad Bhagavatam also is mostly prayers, right? Past times are there, but you can see more of prayers. So the prayers are always glorifying the Lord initially, and then slowly in the end, they will touch base, can we spare his life, right? So it's a lesson for all of us too, right? So don't jump and say, I need money, I need this, no. Genuinely, Krishna, you've given me everything else, right? And then Krishna knows, again, it's up, you know, how, how you determine that, right? So there is one school of thought, why do we need to ask Krishna? Krishna knows everything. And the second one is in Bible, it says, ask and you shall be given, right? So you can see which one works. That's why I hate to keep without any it should be niskam. It should not be sakam. Not, not for anything. But in this case, you can see they're not asking for themselves. They're asking for the husband. life of the husband because the beauty of the wife lies in the husband living. You know, it, it says in one of the prayers, right? So the second one, can somebody read the English translation? Yeah. Patience unto you who are time itself, the shelter of time and the witness of time in all its faces. You are the universe and also a separate observer. You are its creator and also the totality of, the, of all its causes. Wonderful. So I highlighted this or underlined this because you are time itself. You are the shelter of time. You are the witness of time in all its faces. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita five times, 
that he is time. Time, time, time. time. So again, so every time we read the Bhagavad Gita, right, it cannot be a standalone, right? So it's always the explanation of Bhagavad Gita is in Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's not just in this one statement, this is a verse, but then how the time becomes bigger, right? In this, uh, um, you know, past time where we talked about uh, uh, Brahma was there, right? Brahma Vimohana Leela, where he just took his eyes and then one year had passed. And then even when Balaram's, uh, Balaram was supposed to get married, Revati goes with Kakudumi to the higher planet. There was, you remember that past time? Yes. So many, and then oh, I, want to, I want my daughter to get married to Balaram or to some king, oh, that king is gone long time back. You already passed so many hundreds and millions of years when you came here, right? So you can think of all that from Krishna's Bhagavad Gita where it says, I am time. Just not just time this 24, oh, what time is it? 520, that's not the time that we're talking about, right? There's so many other things that uh, are explained beautifully and then Srimad Bhagavatam is how uh, we can understand Bhagavad Gita, okay? Anyone else? English? The author of this is to Lord Krishna and Lord Rama, the sons of Vasudev, and to Lord Madhuna and Lord Anuruddha. We offer our respectful obeisance to the master of all the saints and devotees of See, this is a nice verse which is very common, common one, right? You can chant at any time, right? So you say, I offer, we offer our obeisances to Lord Krishna, to Lord Rama. When you say Lord Rama, it can be Balaram, Lord Ramachandra, it can be Balaram. Yeah. Very beautiful verse. So that's why I selected some verse to put it here so you can take a picture, you feel inspired, you can memorize this. And you can chant this anytime. When you come to the temple, when you see Krishna for the first time here, chant this verse. Okay. Okay. A couple of more verses. Um, uh, anyone else? Uh, English translation? You get all the benefits for reading it. Anybody from the back? Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Non-devotees, in this case, it could be Kali in the very beginning stages, right? So they cannot understand who he is, right? So Rishikesha, the master of senses. And that's why we are using all our senses in trying to understand this pastime as well, right? Not just one-way traffic. We are all contributing to all of our better understanding. So here it says, therefore, all material bodies throw the three worlds, right? So basically it says, Bodies that are in mode of goodness are especially dear to you, right? Not the more mode of ignorance, not in the mode of passion, but especially the mode of goodness. But beyond the mode of goodness is what we should aim for. But bodies in the mode of goodness are especially dear to you, and it is to maintain them and to protect their religious principles that you are now present on earth. See, have they ever talked about saving their husband's life so far? Many, many prayers have gone through. Only glorifying Krishna genuinely. Not, not as a sycophant just to praise him for the sake of these are heartfelt prayers, right? So then, um, here, and then they say, Oh Lord, please be merciful. And they say, the serpent is about to give up the life. Please give us back our husband, who is our life and soul, right? So here, Lord Krishna has been merciful towards their husband by removing the pride, right? Dancing, just as the doctor removes the disease. Yes, but what is the point of doctor killing the patient at the, by, during the process of removing the disease, right? Then it's no use, right? They're saying you're treating him really well to take off the contamination, but I think we need to stop now because otherwise he is going to die, right? And then um, they do not want to become widows because the beauty of the wife is to be with her husband. So if the husband is not there, then there is no beauty according to the scriptures, right? So now please tell us what we should do, right? That's what she, they're asking, wonderful prayers. And uh, four wonderful prayers by Kaliya too. So again, from 10, 16, 56 to 59, he's also praying. You know, he can't even pray. He's almost dead, right? Yeah. But because he gets a second chance. Why did he get a second chance? Because of the wives. Yeah. Who else got a second chance in our scriptures? 
name starts with A, a job will have a second chance. But some of them will get, you know, they don't need a second chance because Krishna takes them to Vaikuntha like the elephant king, Gajendra. There is no second chance for him. Okay, I'm going to take, uh, kill the crocodile, now go and drink water, become a, continue to become an elephant. No, you come with me, right? But here, second chance for Kaliya. Now go to the ocean and live there, right? And then these are the four beautiful verses by Kaliya. Why only four? Because he can't speak, he's almost dead, right? He's saying, we are envious, I'm ignorant, I'm constantly angry. You are the one who's generating this universe. We are by nature always enraged, means angry. Uh, we are deluded by your thing. Please help us, right? So, and then he says, please arrange for us whatever you consider proper, whether it is mercy, be mercy or punishment. So he said, whatever you decide, good. That's exactly what his wife is also praying, right? Spare him, but whatever you decide. So I, I took this from one of the scripture called Sarva Bauma Dharma, where it is said, by taking to spiritual life, one kills every category of disease arising from bad karma. Okay? Beautiful slam dunk statement. Okay? By taking to spiritual life, spiritual life means coming to class like this, coming to the temple, worshipping the Lord, chanting the mantras, anything that you do spiritually, when by taking to spiritual life, one kills every category of disease, Disease means it can be external, external to the body, internal, etc. Right? From bad karma, it's all taken out. So this is from Sarva Bhama Dharma. So the Lord then mercifully pardoned the serpent and told him, ordered him to go to the ocean. Which ocean again? Close to or which which country? Fiji. 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 Right? Ramanaka uh, area, island. So he's asked him to go there. Take your children and go back there. And you will not fear Garuda anymore because on your head, my feet marks are there. Auspicious marks are there. So Garuda will not come near you. Right? So Lord Krishna is bestowing grace both to the victims of violence and to the committer of violence. Okay? So victim of violence are residents of Vrindavan because they are dead, they are displaced, etc. And then the committer of the violence is obviously Kalia because he's not getting killed and all the poison is all removed. And Kalia's wives were great devotees and offered wonderful, wonderful affection. And Krishna withdrew the offense of Kalia as well. So Kalya and his wives offered several gifts. The fascinating thing is they also offered one important gem, Kastuba gem. Now this is very perplexing. For those of you who read Srimad Bhagavatam 8.7 and 8.8, it says during the churning of the ocean of milk, Kastuba gem came. But here, how can this Kastuba gem be given um, at this point in time, because this is late, this is only 5,000 years ago, but churning of portion of milk happened many, many thousands of years ago. So it is said, in other words, because Krishna wanted to act like an ordinary human being, so it is said that the cust he actually dropped it and got the wives of uh, Kaliya to collect it and give it back to Krishna. Right? It's so beautiful. So it was the sixth gem that was generated during the churning of portion of milk. I think I have a slide there. Um, yes, so these are the 12 things that came out from the ocean of milk. So the whole of 8.7 and 8.8 8 .8 have condensed into one slide here. Okay? So first came all the unwanted dangerous animals, right? You sharks and snake came. Then the hala hala poison came and Lord Shiva drank it after getting the permission from his wife. Again, after getting permission from his wife. What did they say? Happy wife, happy life, right? So, so here Surabi came. I highlighted these two because that's relevant to this past time that we talked about. Did we mention anything about Uchai Shrava? Yes. Anybody in the back? Did you remember what was that for? Yes. Horse was white in color, but uh, with the fight between the two mothers or the two wives of Kashyapa, they went and Snake. all the black snakes covered the white uh, horse and then looked back, and that was the eternal problem between Garuda and the snake and then this is the Kastuba money that came and then Krishna made it fall off and then for the Nagata please to collect it and offer it back to Krishna. Okay. That is the Kastuba money that uh, Lord Krishna wears always. Hmm. Yeah. Is there a significance to all these eight uh, great elephants and eight great she yeah, not not, uh, not no past times in Srimad Bhagavatam about them. Um, it's actually called these eight she elephants are called as I 
don't remember the name of and but they're collectively called by one name. But there's no specific pastime in Srimad Bhagavatam about them uh, per se, right? So even even here, Apsaras is not like one particular part uh, pastime. Like of, Apsaras and all we hear we many hear, times, yeah. many times, and yeah. Goddess of Fortune, right. Varuni, all those we learn, but those two alone. Like we don't supposed to be very auspicious, but we don't, uh, not in Srimad Bhagavatam, maybe somewhere in some other Purana there may be some great uh, pastimes. After Kastuva Mani, what is the other one? Padma, 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 Rada. Padma, Rada. Padma Rada. Then Parijada. Parijada we know, we know Indra took it, but Parijata. then we know the Naragasura pastime, Krishna had to go. Uh, after he's Mind. giving back the three things, right? The tip of the mountain, the playground, the umbrella, and uh, one more thing, he's going and giving personally. And he says, okay, by the way, I'm going to take this, parij, uh, this parijata. And then he says, no. Then there was a big fight happened, right? And then finally he fought to Indra and he brings back the parijata flower. Actually, it says all the bees were following the parijata tree from the heaven back to earth. So anytime you see a bee here, don't just uh, ignore it. It's, it's something that has come from the higher planetary system. Following the parijata flower, right? Okay, so Krishna rose up from this um, you know water and then he's got is beautifully dressed right so how is krishna decorated after this massive fight right it's because he was offered all the wonderful garments by kalia and his family right so it's always good to offer gifts to others right when in joyful occasion offer gifts to others right even the animals and trees rejoice when reuniting with lord krishna so it is said all the trees were all fallen down right like the tree uh, the um, branches and the leaves were all fallen down and when Krishna got up it immediately started blossoming it seems right beautifully it's explained in um, you know some of the scriptures so one day asked how can anyone prove that animals and trees became morose at Krishna's loss and um, supposedly uh, lost right because he was in the um, you know coils of uh, Kalia but rejoiced so the animals cried out and the trees dwindled sagging their branches but as soon as they saw Krishna's return, the animals started shaking their heads and tails with happiness and the trees resumed their original erect position filled with nice flowers and fruits. So beautiful. If only we have some videos to enact all that, right? But suddenly the Brahmanas now came from nowhere. Brahmanas suddenly showed up and they said, My dear Nanda Maharaj, please offer a lot of uh, uh, donations for all the Brahmanas. The question can be, where were they? So, <laughs> when all this happened, right? Suddenly they just show up and they say, please, to assure your son will always be free from danger, you should give charity to the Brahman. So our scriptures say, they're always like, you have to give charity to Brahmas. And he gives, right? He didn't ask the same question that we are. My son was trapped there and where were you? You know, didn't chant any mantras? No. So here it is said, the, um, you know, Padma Puran states this, that Brahmanas are always free from faults and criticizing Brahmins takes one to hell because Lord Vishnu becomes angry with some criticizers. Brahmanas remain free from every punishment except the state loss, right? Except the state loss. And uh, the story of the Brahman and beggar is there. I'll uh, quickly go through that. But now who's a Brahmin? That's a good question, right? So here, according to Yajna Valka Smriti, Okay, so this is, uh, you know, Yajna Valka, you know, he had a problem with Vaishampayana, you know, how we got the uh, Shukla Ejurveda. We only have the Krishna Ejurveda, then the Shukla Ejurveda came because of that. A Brahmana means, it is said, I know this is a questionable one moot point, but I'm just reading it from this Yajna Valka Smriti. A Brahmana means just by taking birth in a Brahmana dynasty, at least you are given a title Brahmana. Okay, it could be debatable, but that's... Dvija means when he goes through a sacred thread ceremony. Okay, Dvija. Vipra means when he is learned in Vedic science, he is called as Vipra, like the Sudama Vipra. Okay. Srotriya means when he has all the three qualities. He is born in that uh, dynasty, he, is, he went through the sacred ceremonies, <laughs> sacred the thread ceremony, and he is learned in Vedic science. When we say Vedic science, Talk about Rig Veda, Ajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharvan. That is Vedic, right? So, these are the Brahmins, and if they are that, then you're supposed to continue to give and not to criticize them. Okay? okay, almost there. Now, who knows this verse? Who doesn't know this verse? 
ఉంది then he went away then he came the next day again the dog is barking and trying to bite him and trying to chase him away so he took a big stick hit the dog mm-hmm. you know at that time the dog apparently went and complained to lord rama who was ruling and he said this brahmin hit me so lord rama had to call the brahmin and the and the dog and then he inquired what had happened and the and um, and uh, the brahmin said you know it's my duty to beg and collect what i need to eat i didn't eat for 3 days but this dog is not allowing me so i beat it then the dog is saying what am i supposed to i'm doing my duty anybody who is new there in that area i'm supposed to bark and alert everybody so i'm doing my duty so then uh, lord ram said brahmins cannot be punished so no punishment for the brahmin even though he hit the dog very very hard again an example as to why in those days uh, you know brahmins are supposed to be given donation and then fall to as it is said uh mother esoda cried constantly tears you know after seeing krishna come out and uh, that night they stayed in the bank of yamuna and then there was the first time lord krishna had to swallow a massive fire but i'm not getting into the details of this we we'll cover it in another shrimad bhagavatam class where lord krishna is actually swallowing not the forest fire once but twice okay so we'll get into that later on so we can complain we have maybe somebody can read this probably can you read this we can complain we have lots of challenges in our lives imagine the back to back life threatening challenges that the residents of vrindavana had to go through kaliya and fire yeah they survived every one of the challenges by one doing what they can to protect themselves and more importantly two having 100% faith on lord krishna and sarana and the king that you do, do do what you can and god will do what you cannot example draupadi gajendra sudama vipra uh, taking four handfuls of flat rice from neighboring brahmanas tied up the rice in a torn piece of cloth and then the next fruit one. seller giving fruits to lord krishna story of a man wanting to win lottery jesus and bread i'll i'll, I'll say this but here right so do what you can and god will do what we cannot okay very important you cannot say krishna i have this uh, uh, i need work okay give me a work did you apply anywhere no right did you make your resume no but krishna you have to give me a, a job in uh, google so you do what you can and god will do what you cannot right so that's why the story is here we, we know the story right a person was praying again and again we don't do lottery but just a thoughtful story right my dear god please give me 1 million dollar winning in lottery please pray 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 and asking for this nothing happened finally sir i'm not going to pray to you i've been praying for so long you didn't give me anything forget it god appeared do me a favor buy a lottery and buy a lottery <laughs> you do what you can and then we'll do what we can right so you don't even buying a lottery you want that right so that is why draupadi didn't say krishna krishna please protect no she tried her best she looked at her husband nobody came then she tried to do what she can right and then god did it right so you cannot be lazy and say oh god will do should do everything gajendra what did he do he tried his level best to extricate himself from the hold of um, you know the crocodile from this year thousand years right that is his wives and everybody tried right sudalma vipra he did just didn't sit there and meditate on krishna krishna you are my friend you should not give me this tall is bigger than that no he went there did what he has to and then he got it right so and then this jesus and the bread story you know this story right from bible i'm just picking up from everywhere right so that we get a glimpse of all culture so here there were 15000 people when jesus was praying and he had a session and uh, at the end of it everybody was hungry so there's no um 
you know, Govindas. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, restaurants like we have at that time. So Jesus is asking, okay, all of them are hungry. Uh, can we feed them? Everybody oh, no, we don't have anything. Uh, do you have this? Do you have this? No, we don't have anything. Then finally he said, I'm, I'm so frustrated by all of you saying what you don't have. Then he called a small boy, what do you have? And then he said, I just have five loaves of bread, 15,000 people, five loaves of bread, right? And then he prayed over it and they had for another 10,000 people more bread, right? So do what you can and God, you know, he prayed to God, if you say son of God, he prayed to God and then there was so, so much more, right? Do what you can here and then God will do what we cannot, okay? So Krishna gives us the two benedictions that we saw in the very beginning, right? Just for hearing the story and for you to narrate it to somebody in your house, you will never be afraid of any snake. And then this Yamuna water, for those of you who joined us late, maybe we'll sprinkle some, the purest of pure Yamuna water. It says, if anybody bathes in this place, you're not going to bathe, but at least you can sprinkle the water in your head. And then it is said that uh, if you offer this water to others as well, so uh, think of others, that's the best we can do. And then you're free from sinful reactions as well, okay? So this is a wonderful, wonderful pastime and um, how we can overcome the daily challenges, okay? sarva durgani hankara If you become conscious of me, think of Lord Krishna, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life. Pass over, right? It's not like uh, you're going to trample on top of a shark and walk, right? You're going on this beautiful uh, Royal Caribbean cruise, right? You have a ship that is going. All the sharks are down there. Who cares? Piranhas are there. You cross over, right? So either you cross over or go in that or go in a flight. You cross over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. However, if you do not work in such consciousness, but act to false ego, like this Kalia was doing, then you will be lost. And then that means we will be having challenges, right? So again, Krishna saying all the, you know, challenges, if you surrender to him, it will go away. And then if you surrender to me, based on that, I will accordingly protect you, right? If you surrender 10%, you will get blessings of 10%. Yes. If you surrender 100%, you will get 100%. Yes. That's all. That's 4.11, right? This is another verse for you to memorize, okay? Katan chana smrite yashne tushkaram sukaram bhava tushmrite vipadityam syat sri chaitanyam namamitam. Who's going to be fortunate to read this? Yes, go ahead. Things that are very difficult to do become easy to execute if one somehow or other simply remembers Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But if one does not remember him, even easy things become very difficult. To this Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I offer my respectful obeisances. Okay. One takeaway, one request for all of you, or some of you, you can take this challenge. Please memorize this verse. By the time we have the next class, somewhere in January we'll have, please memorize this verse. And why I'm saying to memorize this verse is, when you have challenge in your life, okay? Work challenge, health challenge, at that time, remember this verse. Everything that is going to be really difficult to you will somehow become very easy if you have to just think of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Lord Krishna, right? They are the same. But easy things become very difficult if you do not think of the Lord. So next time when you're having some challenging time, tough examination, tough people, whatever it is, oh, I'm not thinking of Lord Krishna. Then think of Lord Krishna. Then it will become easy. I can guarantee you that if you really think of Lord Krishna and seek protection like how all of them did, you will get that as well. So this is a must memorize verse. Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Adi Lila 14.1, not for anybody, but for each one of you. And you'll see the value of it if you just remember Lord Krishna. So remember Lord Krishna during challenging times, but also memorize it so that you will know that you will remember Lord Krishna because of memorization of this verse. Okay? Okay, so here, when Krishna becomes the center of one's life, then peace and harmony exist. So this is, although Karya and Garuda were enemies, right, they were... They live peacefully by the mercy of the Lord after that, right? So, you, you know the story, right? Hanuman and Arjuna, you know the story? We'll wrap up with this. Anybody knows the story? Again, it's AI generated picture. You'll never see this anywhere. I, you know, the difficulty I got into chat GPT, by the way. Anyway, so Hanuman and Arjuna, um, you know, Hanuman, you know, they, both of them are great devotees. So Arjuna criticized Hanuman. Hanuman still lives, it is said, right? Even during Dwapraga, even though he's from Kreta Yuga. So Arjuna criticized Hanuman. Why did you take so long to build the bridge? You know, you could have built the bridge very quickly. He said, no, no, it has to withstand the whole army and everything, so it takes time. 
Now, if I was there, just with my arrows, I would bring the, I'll build a very strong bridge in no time. It wouldn't have taken that long. So then, immediately he builds this bridge of arrows, and then he asks Anuman to walk on top of it. Anuman collects all the big, big mountains. He's putting in his back to increase the weight, and he's walking. So definitely, this bridge would have collapsed, but it didn't collapse. And then later on, when he's looking down, and both of them are looking down, Anuman saw Lord Krishna in his turtle form, just like Mount Mandara was kept open, uh, kept, uh, um, you know, active. So here, Anuman's bridge, uh, Anuman's weight did not bring the bridge down. So again, both Anuman and Arjuna realized the God's role and surrendered to his divine will. So that's a nice one. Uh, Lord's will is there. So two different devotees, Anuman and uh, Arjuna, had this problem. And because of Krishna at the bottom, nobody lost and nobody won. Right? So these are good stories we should... And when did it take place? We talked about this um, this wonderful pastime of Kaliya. When did it take place? Okay. So any time in July or August, you will hear Naga Panchami. So Panchami is like Dwadasi, like that the fifth day of the... Um, you know, uh, moon that is uh, either waxing or waning, that is Panchami, right? So that's the day when not only Kaliya but also Vasuki is the snake around Shiva's snake. The, it's called the moving ornament. We have Karpatoka, the he cursed king Nala, and then guided him to redemption. Remember that? We did a class here, Nala and Damayanti. And then Takshaka is the one that bit Maharaj Parikshit to death, right? So all these snakes are being prayed for during Naga Panchami, during the July-August time. So maybe if you have uh, whomsoever scheduling the lectures, you can look at this and then you can schedule somebody on that day and ask them to narrate uh, you know, this pastime or any of the other pastimes. Right? It will be very appropriate on that particular day. So why don't you take a break and drink something for a minute and then we'll go through the summary and then uh, quiz. Naga Panchami is basically the prayers of the... Uh, it's praying to the uh, holy snakes. It's the day where you pray to the snakes like Adisesha and the great time. snakes. Mm -hmm. So give in the so end of the century for you. Like golden days, they do it very... Yeah, even in Vrindavan they do it in a grand scale. Massive, you know, you know, they bring in so much of milk and food offering to actual snakes. That's a big deal with them. Okay, so, Prabhu, this is what? Uh, maybe we'll give them the quiz now. Give it a summary and quiz at the end. Quiz at the end? Okay. Same. Quiz, uh, the summary, you can hold it back here. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go through the summary together. So just hold it for one second. Okay. Or don't read it, just keep it there. No problem. Okay. So this is the chronological summary. I know we started here. We may have gone here, come back here, gone here, come back here, but now we'll go straight, okay? So this is for, uh, to ensure clear registration of this pastime, chronological summary, okay? Pastime took place in Vrindavan when Krishna was about six years old, is that okay? I put it under different heading as well, so it's very clear. Past life, Veda Siramani becomes the Garuda, snake Garuda. Aswa Siramani becomes the crow full of transcendental knowledge. And Lord intervenes and he says, no, no, I'll come and bless you. Lord Krishna will dance on your head and you'll never be afraid of uh, um, uh, Garuda. And then uh, Bhusandhi, you have transcendental knowledge and during Rama and time. Lineage, Kali is one of Kashyapa and Khadru's serpent sons. Garuda is the son of Kashyapa and Vinita. Okay, I'm raising my hand again, second time. This is a quiz question. Okay, Conflict between them arose because, you know, the black snakes covered the white Uchai Shrava. And then uh, she had to fail. Uh, Kad, uh, Kadru, Kadru and her sons did this in an illegal way to win the bet. And then Garuda was upset and then that's why he's eating all the snakes. Okay? Life in Ramanaka. Kalya lived with his family and uh, amongst other snakes. Garuda ate the snakes as tax to prevent extinction. Okay? Kalya def uh, defied this arrangement by eating the offerings meant for Garuda. And Kalya's encounter. So they had fierce fight. And because of the uh, Saubari Muni's curse, uh, Garuda cannot go to uh, Yamuna, and then Kalia knew that, so he went with his family there. But because Kalia was there, the poison from Kalia polluted Yamuna, killing birds, creatures, trees, etc. Krishna jumps into it from the Kadapa tree that was not 
dead because of Kaliya, because of the pot nectar. of nectar that he was carrying, right? So he kept it there before he ate the fish. So Kaliya's attack, Kaliya envious ferociously attacked Krishna, he bit Krishna's chest and wrapped him in coils. Now distress in Vrindavan, they saw the omens in the on earth, sky and in the living beings. Living beings, which is not so good sign, when which part, side of the body? Left. Left, left, for, okay, left for men, right? right for. And uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj were all going towards the Yamuna because of the auspicious signs of Krishna's feet. Gopis and Mother Esodas were completely upset, but they were taking courage by the past, past times of Lord Krishna. Remember past times? Agasura, how he killed and everything. So they had the confidence that nothing will happen to Krishna. Balaram was completely calm because he knows all this uh, extraordinary power of Lord Krishna. He restrained Nanda Maharaj and others from entering. <coughs> Breaking free. Finally, Krishna breaks free uh, from his uh, um, act of uh, being a mere mortal. And then he expands himself and he dances on the thousand hoods of Kaliya. And all the heavenly, uh, the, uh, um, you know, uh, you could say devatas, right? Devatas and other personalities, all of them came with their musical instrument, like Kartal and Nandanda. All of them and all of them came and played that so that uh, Krishna can continue to dance. And then Krishna, uh, Krishna uh, defeats Kaliya in the end, and all the contamination is also coming out. And mentally, he surrendered. Wonderful prayers by Nagapatnis, and then Kaliya also offered prayers and mercy of Lord Krishna. So he said, you have to leave now with your family and uh, everybody go back to Ramanata Island. And then he said, Garuda will not attack you because your hoods are all uh, bearing my footprints. And then once immediately Krishna left, Yamuna became pure. Not because Kaliya left, Yamuna became pure, but by Krishna's mercy it became pure instantaneously. Otherwise they have to drain the water out, poison, no, instantaneously. It, uh, it, it got restored to its uh, pristine, pure state. Krishna emerges from the water, fully decorated because the Nagapatnis and Kaliya gave him so much of uh, gems and jewels, etc. And Nanda Maharaj is very, uh, you know, he's, he's offering so much of gifts to the Brahmanas, charities to the Brahmins. And Mother Esoda is overwhelmed with uh, love for Krishna. And Krishna offers two wonderful benedictions. Direct benediction by Krishna is not by Veda Vyas, nothing less when Veda Vyas gives it, but this is given by Lord Krishna in the past time itself. Okay. okay, so the lessons to be learned. So the summary that we went through, um, you you will have it for you to take it home so that even after three months, four months, what is this Kaliya's past time? You have everything that you need in this piece of paper. Okay, And also the lessons to be learned. Maybe I want to ask you, we want to ask you, is there any lessons to be learned from this past time? I may have covered it there, but uh, I want to give you the opportunity to teach us. Yes. Uh, we we started praying to Krishna for anything that we that we want by praising him first, and not just directly asking about it. Wonderful. I don't think so. I had it in my uh, lessons to be learned. It's it's general for all prayers <coughs> across <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. All the prayers by Nagapatnis, by Gajendra, you name every Muchukunda's prayers. Everything starts off with heartfelt devotion to Lord Krishna through prayers. Nothing what they want is there. But at the very end, if they are asking for some someone or something, then it is there. Again. Very good point. Yeah, I never yeah. have sense of what this country is my lake, is my area, me, mine, I. That's yeah, I, me, myself. I, that's I, a very good one because that's what brought the downfall of uh, this money, right? Veda Sura Muni, if you had allowed the other person to just chant somewhere, he didn't buy that property for millions of dollars, it's a cave that is there, uh, but then I, me, myself, so it becomes my position, and the problem started. And then when he went to Yamuna, again, why would anybody come? Krishna jumped into the water. Who's that coming into my house, right? So what? Live nicely with everybody. Yes. Yeah, I was saying that I actually have struck my heart and mind that not seeing the God, only seeing the God, Will not happen. Very good point. Until you realize. Yes. Positive. Everybody agrees that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I put the example, right? We may still say, no, no, I'm going to the temple. Go into the don't get any, don't take away anything from there. It's the best thing that we can do coming to the temple. Mm -hmm. But it's good, but is it good enough? Mm -hmm. Right? If we don't change and we are not devoted, all the demons also saw Lord Krishna face to face. Nothing changed. They still fought with him, nothing changed in their life, right? Un until they were forcibly forced to change, either killed and got, uh, you know, uh, 
the devotion that is needed uh, to go back home, back to God. Right? So seeing God face to face is good, but unless we change and then see God in a different perspective, that's what is needed. So all these, you know, again, I would like to repeat, right? Whatever is there, Bhagavad Gita verses, the lessons to be learned. The lessons to be learned is not for you. It's for me. Similarly, it's for you, not for others, right? It's for each one of us, right? That's why these past times are there. Don't take somebody's share uh, for yourself. It was means, you know, the feet. The sacrifice of the snakes were means for the Buddha. Very good point. Alia was taking the Yeah, so, so it's a short-term gain, long-term pain, right? He started taking the food of Garuda and then this bigger pain. He came and killed many of the animals and birds in Vrindavan because of him coming there, right? And it can be said of the same thing, Saubar and Muni too, right? So there are many, many past but it's a good past thing where don't usurp somebody's property or meant for someone else. It's not for you, then it's a short term gain, long term pain. Okay? Each open is a sale in the very second verse. First verse. How many verses? 14, uh, 14 verses? How many verses? 18, 18 verses. And the first one is this one. <coughs> yeah. Isha Vashyam Idam Sharvam, right? So, you know, again, one, one thing about uh, Isha Upanishad, right? So this Isha Upanishad, we talked about Yajur um, uh, Veda, right? So in the, in the, we have two Yajur Veda, Krishna Yajur Veda and white and black Yajur Veda. The exact same 18 verses are in Veda. So when the verses are in Vedas, it's, it's something more supposed to be more powerful, authentic. Vedas, right? Authentic, authentic right? Authentic. So this Isha Upanishad is in the actual Vedas. It's not an Upanishad that is linked to Vedas because you have Brahmana, you have Aranyaka, you have Upanishad. The Vedas are there, Samhita, and then you have this Brahmana, Aranyaka, Upanishad. But this Isha Upanishad, the actual verses are in the Samhita itself, right? So just to give you the perspective that right. it's, it's very powerful, right? So don't think it's like, it says, the third line says, Tena Satyena Bhujita. Do not take, you, you should you should take only what is allotted as a quota to you, do not, not uh, somebody. So this this is definitely not meant for him, right? Like the snakes and the other thing was meant for Karuda. Yes, ma'am. Very all, I mean, all of them are supposed to be really good, fantastic verses. Okay, so we'll embrace the lessons with the positive attitude, it transforms challenges into opportunities and fuels continuous growth and prepares us for future challenges in our life right otherwise what's the point we heard the past time okay then we can all go home no the reason the past times are there in Srimad bhagavatam is for these actions right which you already said right these are a significant part of the lessons to be learned respect all living entities why all the living entities are coming from the same source? You remember Kashyapa married so many daughters, 60 daughters and creepers and trees and dogs and horses and tiger. Everything came. So the, we're not saying if you see a cobra, I want to offer my respectful obeisances to you. No, we don't do that. You get bitten by a cobra, right? So we have to use the intelligence that is given. Just treat them. Don't kill them unnecessarily, right? Don't go and feed the you know uh, lion with uh, with something in your hand come eat it right? so that, that's that's not going that's not what it meant right so just you know respect all living entities and the consequences of dishonesty right winning through deceit like kadru strict to cover uchashiva's horse brings in long term suffering right so consequences of dishonesty everybody remembers that dishonesty right and then respect boundaries and property right Taking what belongs to others, like Kalia eating, Garuda's offering, leads to prolonged miseries, right? All this is there in your takeout, right? Something you can reflect, you can add more to it, right? There'll be much more, right? When you think about it, you'll add more. But these are obvious ones that we need to take away after the session back home, okay? Inner transformation is the key. Kalia formally made the same, retail is envious nature despite the change in form. That's what we said, right? Get it done this life itself. If I'm getting too angry, if I'm doing this bad, this bad, try to undo it in this life itself. Otherwise, in next life, you're going to carry it in whatever form that we may have. Devotion versus proximity, right? Simply seeing God face to face is not enough. Kalia and other demons saw Krishna but lack devotion due to unpurged inner con contamination, right? We go into the temple to see deity form is good but not good enough if we do not change in turn. Same thing with Duryodhana. Hmm. Same thing. Yeah. The consciousness is polluted. He sees Krishna. He sees Krishna but he's not seeing Krishna, right? Seeing but not seeing, right? So again, these are things that only when you spend a lot of time you get all these things right now that's why this two hours that we spent on this 
it's so invaluable, right? You know, otherwise if you read the past time or if you hear the speak past time, there's not much of learning that you can extract from that. You all agree? Mm -hmm. So this is this is the value that uh, all of you bring, you know, with your experience and with your insights. Selfless prayers, right? The residents of Vrindavan prayed not for their desires but for Krishna's well-being. So I put this here. They did not pray for God. They they're praying. So they're not praying to God, but they're praying for God, right? So it's a big difference, right? So they're praying for God. So we all pray to God, right? They're all praying for the safety of God, right? How sweet it is. Divine immunity. Krishna's divine nature remained unaffected by Kalya's venom or bite, right? Doesn't matter, bite him in the chest, close to the heart, does not matter. That is divine nature of Lord Krishna. Constant remembrance. The gopi set an example by remembering Krishna's past tense in happiness, but more importantly, during the distress as well. Everybody agree so far? Yeah. These are important, you know, we are e extracting the gems of what we can take. How can this apply in our life, right? Past time took place, but we're just taking something. Even if two or three things we remember as a takeaway from here, that will really change our lives. Prayer. You have heard this? From your lips to God's ears. Such a beautiful one, right? Prayers are from your lips to God's ears. So I'm not taking credit for this. This is some, so I think, um, Finnish saying, I think, but it's applicable to all of us, right? So when you when you pray next time, don't forget that it's going from your lips directly to God's ears, okay? So power of sincere prayers, right? So we all do this prayers here. Don't you chant one round for somebody's health, somebody's uh, well-being, right? Some Maharaj, you know, when we need, we all chant. That's the power. Power of many. You've heard of power of many? Power of many brings in the transformation, right? So power, sincere prayers gave second chance to Kaliya. Unity in prayer, right? So that's another one, uh, Nagapatni's prayers. Hardships as lessons. Challenges like Krishna's punishment are meant to inspire internal transformation. If Krishna did not dance on Kaliya's head, he would have changed. Do you think he would have changed? Sometimes, like I said, for severe one, for cancer growth, you need a sharp knife, right? You can't take a band-aid and put it and get that, right? So depending on the nature of it, you need that punishment. So in this case, hardships are the needed lesson. That's how the ego, pride, and anger will go away. Mercy in many forms, right? So Kalya was granted second chance. Ajamil was granted second chance. But Gajendra, no need of second chance, right? Right away he got that, right? So that is uh, mercy in many forms. Joyful expression. This is another takeaway for all of us, okay? Express gratitude through offerings to the Lord and others during joyful occasions as exemplified by Nagapatni, Kaliya, and Nanda Maharaj. Okay? So don't <laughs> hold back on giving gifts. Whenever you're giving any gifts for anybody, right? Your relatives, anybody, don't hold back uh, $10, you know, more than enough, $50. Give more than what you can. And you'll see how, you know, money is like blood. It should keep flowing. More you give, you see how it will start flowing. So don't hold back. Whomsoever you're going to give, you are related to, for whatever reason, don't hold back. Okay, that's another takeaway. Give it as a, you know, any joyful occasion, just go somewhere. If you have to give money, some poor people, give it. Don't think of what is he going to do with my money. Mm -hmm. Then you draw the line, right? So anything that you are giving for good cause, give, give it to your heart's content, right? So that's another takeaway. That's what uh, Nanda Maharaj did to the Brahmins who did not even do anything. Even for that, he gave so much, right? And Nagapatnis and uh, Kaliya gave so much to Lord Krishna as well. Lord's infinite mercy, right? In spite of the grave offense of Kaliya, see Krishna, what did he do? He gave him this, you know, he was biting him, trying to kill him. Still he gives him the second chance and says, go away. That's Lord's mercy, right? And approaching difficult people. Krishna balanced approach teaches us to correct firmly while leaving space for mercy and growth. That's what he did, right? To Kalya, he was very firm, stamping him, but at the same time, he offered his mercy and growth and even during, during this toxic, even though he's a toxic individual, okay? Transforming to toxicity, the toxic, toxicity, right? Just as Krishna purified Yamuna and restored it to life-sustaining river, spiritual wisdom and grace can turn even the most negative situations into positive outcomes. All of you agree? Yes. Okay. Maybe we can read, somebody can read this second part. Anybody from the back? Second. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, danger of ego. Okay, danger of ego. Like an old man followed that verse. 
Aliyah's pride that was done to him. True relief come, came only of the surrounding humility. This illustrates that unchecked ego causes suffering while human humility and Right? All of us agree, right? So these are all significant, important lessons. So maybe uh, anyone can read the last one? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Prabhu, Prabhu, can go ahead. Humility is a virtue. Kalia's story reminds us to embrace humility to handle life's difficulties gracefully and avoid the bursting effects of pride. Right. So I just put it in heading, in different headings, so it's much more clearer. This is another AI generated, you'll never see this picture, but you can see this, this whole pastime, you can see Lake Yamuna as our heart, okay? Our heart is as pure as Lake Yamuna. But this serpent, Kalia, is the ego that is there, right? So pride, arrogance, <coughs> self-centeredness, etc. The venomous fangs are destructive aspects of ego that can harm both us and the relationship with others, right? So here, the impact of ego's power, just like poison of the serpent polluted Yamuna and, and drove life away, unchecked ego isolates us from meaningful connections and inner peace. Okay? So this is like the whole summary of this pastime, what we can learn from it personally, right? So every pastime is supposed to have an impact on us and something should change, right? Either gradually or progressively. So our heart, is like Yamuna and the ego is the serpent that is living there and it should be bereft of that ego and that's only can be taken out by us, right? We have to consciously do that, okay? Okay, let's go to the quiz. So can we, I guess, we'll take the quiz as this, uh, Prabhu, Prabhu, can you give him that for takeaway? Yeah, it's already, I gave them. Oh, you have the yeah. printouts? Can I take yes. You have the quiz as well? Yes. Altogether. Altogether. Okay. Yeah, okay, Prabhu. Take something to eat. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so very quickly, let's go through this. We'll wrap it up in about five minutes, okay? Okay, let's go through this quiz. Yeah, now we can distribute it. So please uh, make use of this. It'll really help you. You know, understand the past time on a later date. Okay. okay, quiz number one. Question number one. All of you can open that page for quiz. Open it. Please. Color print stool. Thank you, Prabhu. We spent a lot of time and effort. Okay, we have the quiz page open, everybody. Second round of uh, roast milk coming or only one round? No. Only one round? That's it? Okay. So the question number one. Veda Sira Muni became a serpent, Kalia, and Asva Sira Muni becomes a crow, Bhushandi. True or false? True. True. Everybody agrees? Yeah. A little bit louder will be good. True, True. True or false? True. 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 Okay. Second question. Kalia's mother's name is. Don't look at the summary, okay? Kadru. Kadru. K to K. Remember, this is another one. K to K. Kalia and Kadru, same. Very good. Question number, only 12 questions are there, so we can go with you, okay? The cause of eternal enmity of Garuda towards the snakes was because of the color of Surabi the cow, Airavata the elephant, Uchayshava the horse, throat of Lord Shiva. C. C. Uchayshava the horse, because it's supposed to be white horse, but was covered by black cobra snakes. Question number four. The abode of serpents is at Dash Island. B. Ramanaka Island, B, B for boy. Very good. Four, uh, number five. Garuda was antagonistic towards Kalia because Kalia had thousand hoods, but Garuda had only one head. Kalia would eat all the offerings meant for Garuda. Kalia was Veda Siramuni in his previous life, all of them. He would eat all offerings meant for Garuda. Yes, B for Balaram. Kalia would eat all offerings meant for Garuda. Number six. This is a trick question, not a trick question. If you really, I didn't raise my hand to alert you. This is a good question. Garuda's father is Tarksha, Arishtanemi, Kashyapamuni, and these all three names are of the same person. All three. All three names. Yes. So Kashyapamuni is also called as Arishtanemi. If you read the Vedic prayers, it'll be Lord for Arishtanemi. Okay. And some for Takshya as well. So it's all. 
for the same person Kashyap and Madhu. Okay, six more and we are done. Garuda could not enter Yamuna, which Kaliya took shelter of, is because Garuda was afraid of Kaliya. Garuda had the curse of Saubarimuni. Garuda did not like the fishes of this lake. Ramanaka to Vrindavan is too far. He had the curse of. Yes, curse of Saubarimuni. Number eight, Lord Krishna jumped from the dash tree into the Yamuna to kill Kaliya. Kadamba. Yes. Nine. The residents of Vrindavan were able to get the get to the Yamuna while searching for Krishna by knowing the position of his cows, path marked by Krishna's footprints, flower from his garlands that had to drop to the ground. The path by his footprints. B. B. But don't ignore the other ones. I think through it and try to confuse you by giving the other <laughs> options. Flowers are from his garlands that had dropped to the ground as he was walking on. No. <laughs> okay. So ten. Kaliya had 1,000 hoods and out of which 101 were prominent. Yes, for, true, true. True. It's true? Yeah. Why Prabhu? It's said in one of the slides in the past time, right? 101 are prominent, but he's got 1,000 hoods. During the fight between Krishna and Kaliya, the bad omens arise on earth, in the sky, in the bodies of living entities, all of the above. All of the above. All the four answers, not the four. Yeah. Last one. Lord Krishna at the end of this past time killed Kaliya and his family. Killed Kaliya but spared his family as Nagapatni offered wonderful prayers. See, spared Kaliya's life and ordered him to go to Ramana Kaya. That's good. Very good. Thank you. Is the one Gese Si Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada I think some nice pictures of Prabhupada offering um, fire sacrifice, right? So think of all our ego and our bad luck and karma, you know, everything going into the fire. Uh, Prabhupada, who is the founder of Acharya of ISKCON, is actually helping us. Okay, think of all this. See how many uh, times he's doing fire offerings here. Think of all the ego and everything going into the fire. This another question somebody asked. Did Prabhupada do fire sacrifice? These are some of the pictures, right? So it does a lot of fire sacrifice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, anything to share? Any questions? Any, anything else that we, we didn't cover? So main thing is with this session and with this printout, you will know everything that you need to know about this past time. Okay? You, you, you know, this is like you hearing from several other uh, uh, devotees giving, but everything is here. All you have to do is read this once. If you're going to give a class somewhere else, you have everything that you need. Yeah. 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 Oh, you see, this mother. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, before we forget, this is the actual Yamuna water, we so we will sprinkle it on everybody. Okay, yeah. you have the thing, you can put it there. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the sprinkler. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have the sprinkler there. So. And um, uh, so after a long time, so now in future, so we are going to have every month, uh, except, uh, December. except December, then it's January. going to be January. every month. So. Uh, please come. Uh, I know it's little, little tough. You have to come from somewhere in two hours, but hopefully, what you get out of this will be outweighing the challenge that you have to go and you, to come here. And you see the information. You know, yeah. it is From, not that. Can we get the other videos of the previous one day, classes? One day works. So many, so much hours he has spent with his with his very busy schedule and all. Can share the slides with us also? Okay. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna. So Prashad, Mr. Mother, mother, wait, mother.